call our council meeting to order. As we begin today's meeting, we'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered here today on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and before then, the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Huron, and Wendat. We also acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, and other global Indigenous people that now call Brampton their home. We are honored to live, work, and enjoy this land. Please all rise for the singing of our national anthem to be followed by a moment of personal reflection. are present uh, today uh, and thank you uh, for uh, the indulgence of the uh, late uh, start today. Uh, today is um, Eid and in the uh, Muslim faith it is the holiest day of the year. I know members of council were spread out across the city uh, ex expressing Eid greetings uh, on behalf of this mosaic of faiths that we have in our community. I had the opportunity to attend nine masjids this morning, uh, and uh, uh, I think it was important to um, highlight that Brampton is proud of all our different cultural traditions. And thank you to the councillors that woke up early this morning to participate in those um, celebrations. It's also Tim Horton's Send a Kid to Camp Day. I know members of council were also supporting that charitable cause as Councillor Bowman shows off and Councillor Medeiros their Tim Horton's coffee. Um, Members of Council, there are a few agenda changes identified on the package in front of you. I will ask the City Clerk to review the changes for today's agenda since its publication last Thursday. Um, Mayor Brown, members of Council, members of staff and the public watching or attending today, these are the changes for today's agenda. There are a number of items of new business that are being added to today's agenda as a result of the Planning and Development Committee meeting which occurred this past Monday, June 3rd. There is Bylaw 126-2009 to adopt Amendment number OP 2006-159 at Highway 410 and Steel Secondary Plan Area 5 in Wards 3 and 7. There is Bylaw 127-2009 to amend, excuse me, 2019 to amend Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 270-2004 as amended in extension of the downtown parking exemption in Wards 1 and 3. As well, there are minutes identified for, from closed session as 21.8 on today's agenda from the closed session of the Planning and Development Committee meeting of this past Monday, June 3rd. There were a number of items that were listed on the published agenda that was published last week that are either distributed to members this morning or were published online. Uh, items distributed to members this morning are item 11.3, minutes from the Governance and Council Operations Committee meeting of this past Monday, June 3rd. Item 11.4, recommendations only and not minutes for the Planning and Development Committee meeting which occurred this past Monday, June 3rd. In terms of items that have been distributed and published online, item 3.2, minutes from the City Council meeting of May 22nd. Item 6.1, a briefing report from the Office of the Chief Administrative Officer regarding government relations matters. Item 11.2, minutes from the Committee of Council meeting of last Wednesday, May 29th. 
as well. Um, there is additional um, business, which I noted previously, in terms of 21.8 minutes from closed <coughs> session for the Planning and Development Committee meeting of this past Monday. And there is an additional delegation requested for today's meeting, and this is in regard to item 17.2, which is a discussion item at the request of Regional Councillor Santos regarding climate change. The additional delegation is from David Lang, identified as Delegation 7.1-2. Those are the changes, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Are there any additions or changes or deletions to the agenda? Uh, Councillor Pelleschi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to add a discussion item on the GTA West Corridor <laughs> Environmental Assessment. Okay. So. Uh, Councillor Fortini. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to add a discussion on the Brampton Safe C Safety Committee. And also, maybe I don't know if we could uh, just put 11.3 in consent, just in case if, unless someone has questions. Okay. Uh, we'll deal with the consent after, but... Um, Councillor uh, Santos. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to add an in-camera agenda item. Uh, position plan procedure criteria or instruction to be applied to many negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board. Um, and this has been checked with the city solicitor. Okay. Uh, Councillor Dillon. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to add a, an announcement on the remembrance of the 30, 35th anniversary uh, of the attack on the Golden Temple. Uh, uh, Councillor Fertini. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to, on the discussion on the safety, can we add it uh, after announcement as if uh, we have other municipal business to do? Uh, would that be good for us? Okay. And I have an item uh, on uh, uh, the charity event that we can add as well. Uh, Councillor Santos and Dylan, you're still on the board. I assume that's... Uh, Sorry. Cool. Okay. Okay, all those in favor of the changes? Motion carries. Do any members have a declaration of pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act for any matter to be considered on today's agenda? Seeing none, the clerk will so neat note for the meeting minutes. We have the... Adoption of the minutes, Minutes City Council Special Meeting May 21st, 2019, minutes of regular meeting May 22nd, 2019. These were distributed prior to the meeting. We're now ready to move to the next item of business. Um, I have a motion from Councillor Willen, seconded by Councillor Santos, to approve the minutes as printed and circulated. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, consent motion. The items listed with an asterisk on the agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial, the consent motion is to adopt this matter on today's agenda without the need for a separate discussion on the item unless a member requests a separate discussion. Do any members wish to add an item or remove an item from the consent motion on the agenda? Uh, Councillor Pertini, you had one before? It was just uh, basic on the board committee. Uh, uh, which one? 11 point? 11.3. Uh, 11 Okay, Councillor Bowman has a question on that one. Okay. So it'll just be a very quick question. So. Okay, that's fine. Um, and uh, nine point one. Uh, is there agreement to add nine point one to consent? Okay. Okay. And also on consent twelve point seven to accept the recommendation. Um, item 17.5, which is Hockey Day in Brampton, the added item uh, which you added. Uh, the motion is on the screen. It will require a mover and a seconder. Oh, this, oh, but, sorry, but this can be dealt with as part of the consent. That's the intent. No, I wasn't adding this one to consent, but I guess we, we could. Uh, Councillor, this would be moved by Councillor, myself and seconded by Councillor Willens. Uh, we get 10 days a year for, uh, um, for the CA uh, Centre as part of our agreement. And we're doing an event in support of William Osler Health Center. Uh, but no, I was, uh, yeah, yeah. At uh, twelve point seven, was it adding to consent? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's uh, twenty-one point seven, which is closed oh, session. So yes. it is. Uh, council would then acknowledge uh, the, um, the documents that have been provided in closed session to council, 
in regard to this item and accept the direction and give the direction that's okay. set out in the report. Okay, and, and 9.1 as well. 9.1 is the re request to begin a procurement of traffic signal maintenance services for, five year, for a five year period. Okay, all those in favor? Motion carries for those consent items. And so just to clarify, that's 9.1, 12.7, and the new 21, 21.7, okay. We are now at item uh, 11, committee reports or minutes. We have four committee reports in the form of minutes or recommendations on today's agenda. Under council's meeting procedures, the committee or section chair introduces the committee report or minutes and summarizes the matters considered and now brought forward to, to council for today's ratification. Uh, the committee recommendations, uh, sir, yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, we're actually at announcements. So. And we have an additional announcement from Councillor uh, Dillon. Apologies for that. Um, should we do Councillor Dillon's announcement? Uh, should we want to do Councillor Dillon's announcement first? In order? Okay. So let's do, uh, first we'll do Big Brothers Big Sisters Appeal 2019, Tim Horton's Bowl for Kids Sake Trophy presentation, Lori Platty, Public Relations Manager, Big Brothers Sisters uh, Appeal, are here today for this announcement. Thank you, Mayor Brown and members of council for having me here today. Um, and on behalf of all of us at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Peel, I just want to thank the city of Brampton for your continued support of our Tim Hortons Bowl for Kids Sake. It is our largest fundraiser of the year. Um, our goal this year was to raise $150,000, which goes directly towards providing our mentoring programs for youth in our community. Uh, we're really proud to announce that we surpassed our goal of 158,000 raised this year. So a lot of that can be attributed towards the city of Brampton's support. Um, it's my pleasure to congratulate the city of Brampton um, for winning the City Challenge Trophy uh, with a special thanks to Councillor Fortini for his, and Ingrid Jag too for their incredible fundraising efforts of $25,000 raised. Um, this is the 11th year in a row. <laughs> it's not easy raising funds. It's harder and harder all the time. Uh, we know it wasn't easy for you and Ingrid, and we thank you very much for your continued support. We thank each one of you for your continued support. Many of you, including Mayor Brown, were out at our event. Um, sharing in the festivities. It's a lot of fun. Um, and the main thing is, is it comes down to, this is benefiting the kids in our community. There's a growing need all the time. Um, and we appreciate you um, seeing the value in our programs and supporting them. So thank you very much. And I have two really big trophies here to present to you. And I think we wanna do some photos if that's possible. Sure, uh, let Councillor Fertini speak first, and then we can take a group photo. I'll just note, uh, um, as you acknowledge, uh, Council Fertini uh, and Ingrid in his office really went above and beyond uh, attempting to uh, fundraise and uh, force everyone to participate. Whether <laughs> you were free or not, uh, Ingrid uh, ordered everyone to participate. So uh, thank you for your great work, uh, Council Fertini. It's not only about me, it's usually the whole council always participates and gives out of their budget. And Ingrid really puts a lot of work into this and uh, she haunts the developers down and, and you know, it was an election year, it was very hard, but we managed to get more than last year and hoping next year we'll get more and I know it goes to good cause. Um, um, some of the councillors couldn't attend because we have different events that night and hoping maybe next year we could organize it, that way they could all be there and be part of it. And I want to thank everyone in council for helping out. Thank you. Everyone can mark for 2020, February 26 in their calendars. Ingrid will let you know. <laughs> yes. Thank you to all of you.
Our next item is item 5.2, an announcement regarding Crossing Guard Appreciation Day, June 11th, 2019. Violet Skirton, Crossing Guard Supervisor, Public Works Engineering, and Patrick Doran, Chair of Branton School Traffic Safety Council, are here today for this announcement. Welcome, Violet and Patrick. Good morning, Mayor Brown, member of council. Uh, with me this morning, I brought along Iris Turney, who's been with the Crossing Guard in the city for over, I think, 40 years, 39 years? 39, going on 40. Going on 40 years as a relief guard. So this morning, I'd like to say to council, as we near the end of another school year, it's a perfect time of the year to say thank you for the Crossing Guards and all that they do. Every day in all kinds of weathers and conditions, they're out there doing their job, whether it's cold, rain, snow, or whatever, and we truly need to thank them. And if you would, as you pass them, give them a beep of your horn, acknowledging them, and I'll say thank you. And I want to thank you all for supporting us. That's it. Okay, well, on behalf of city councilors, thank you for uh, looking out for uh, young students and children in our community. It's so important. And I know it takes a lot of a big volunteer effort. And I know uh, Councillor Williams wanted to uh, echo that as well. Yes, um, I know. Um, Councillor Fortini is not on the board, but I've, I'm sitting on the board this year. And you know, crossing guards, you provide a vital service to ensure the safety of all of the students who travel to and from their home to school. And I, I, I want everyone to really appreciate the work that crossing guards do and the risks that you all put yourselves in. You know, uh, I'm always anxious whenever I take my kids to school and. Um, our lovely crossing guard blows the whistle and puts the sign out and people still will drive through. So I would want to just want to encourage everyone to know that crossing guards, you are putting yourselves out there and you, you're so kind to the students and the students respect the work that you do and they re listen to you all um, and uh, follow the rules. And so thank you so much. And I want to encourage all council members, if you are, are with your kids in the morning, shake a hand, bring a gift, and appreciate the hard work that you all do. So thank you so much. Thank you. Our next item is item 5.3, an announcement regarding summer in the city programming. Uh, Kelly Stahl, Senior Manager of Cultural Services, Economic Development and Culture, is here today for this announcement. Welcome, Kelly. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor Brown, members of council. I'm excited to be here this morning on behalf of the cultural services team, many of whom are here with me today, uh, to share with you some of the great events taking place in our city this summer. As you know, Brampton's various festivals and events contribute to the quality and diversity of community life for Brampton citizens and tourists. And Brampton continues to be a mosaic of artistic expression, cultures, and lifestyles. Between our city-led celebrations, Garden Square programming, and weekly farmer's market, our team works with cross-departmental stakeholders and community partners to plan and execute over 60 events throughout the summer. We kick off a series of summer celebrations in downtown Brampton this weekend, starting with Italian Heritage Month on Sunday, June 9th. And I understand there's a members of the community here to celebrate that as well. Quickly followed by Filipino Heritage Month on June 13th, Portuguese Heritage Month on June 15th, National Indigenous Peoples Day on June 21st, and Pride in the Square on July 7th. Canada Day is our largest annual event, hosted on July 1st at Chincuzi Park, with activities to entertain the entire family. Highlights for 2019 include over 30 food vendors showcasing diverse cuisine, special programming by the Indigenous Network, hands-on arts and cultural workshops by local artists and arts organizations, live performances from Juno award-winning Canadian artists, who are uh, going to be announcing next Tuesday, June 11th, so stay tuned for that announcement and the grand finale spectacular fireworks display presented by Tim Hortons. In addition to our festivals and events, we have weekly programming starting this month, which includes our summer season in Garden Square. Every night, every Wednesday, we have our This is Brampton concerts, Around the World movie night every Thursday night in partnership with Carabram, Friday night live concerts each week at the market programming every Saturday morning for the market goers, and double header Saturday movie nights. 
As you all know, an exciting and recent addition to Garden Square is the extremely popular viewing parties for the NBA championships. We hope to see you at 9 p.m. tonight when the Raptors take on the Warriors for game three. Our classic downtown farmer's market returns this month, hosting 70 weekly vendors and over 30 community groups throughout the season. Join us on Saturday, June 15th for opening day with music performances and a celebration of the 33rd annual market season. Mount Pleasant Village Night Market begins a new season on Thursday, June 20th from 4 to 8 p.m. and runs until Thanksgiving weekend. This year you'll find a variety of vendors as well as weekly active living program featuring yoga and Zumba for the family. So not only do we invite you to attend our events, we encourage you to share Brampton Story as the place to be all summer long by participating in our Experience Brampton social media campaign. Experience Brampton is our digital media initiative to encourage locals and visitors alike to share their favorite sights, sounds, tastes, and celebration by tagging their social post with the Experience Brampton hashtag. For more information on the festivals, events, celebrations happening in Brampton all summer long, including a wide range of exciting sport events and those that are led by the community, visit brampton.ca for the complete calendar of events. So thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in the summer. Uh, thank you, uh, Kelly, and you certainly have a, a very busy agenda ahead, and it's great. Uh, so much happening uh, in Brampton. Uh, Councillor uh, Vicente. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to give a shout out to uh, everyone in the Economic Development and Culture Office here at City of Brampton. They've been working really, really hard to make sure that we're maximizing the use of our city facilities, and particularly with the downtown area. Always looking to see more and more people enjoying the area and participating and seeing one another. And uh, let's not forget how important it is that these events are to the economy of the downtown businesses. And, uh, but I always want to go back to when we live in a city like Brampton that is so culturally diverse, to have the opportunity to enjoy the downtown area and to have these events is really a treat and is what one of the reasons that makes Brampton a really great city. So thank you, Kelly, for all of your work from your team. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Vicente. Councillor Santos. Thank you. Through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I echo the same comments from my teammate, Councillor Vicente, and I'm pitching for everyone to attend the first ever Hollow Hollow Party next week on June the 13th, hosted by the Mayor. So thanks for all of your hard work. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Santos. And I would note, uh, we do have some great events coming up. Uh, the Italian Heritage event, the Portuguese event coming up, uh, um, the NBA viewing uh, parties have been uh, incredible. 5,000 people at Garden Square. If uh, you're free tonight, certainly come down at 9 a.m., 9 p.m. Uh, tonight. Uh, and the Hallow Hallow party, the date on that, Councillor Santos? June 13th. June 13th. For those that haven't tried a Hallow Hallow, you put everything in a drink. It doesn't make sense, but somehow it tastes amazing, and it's a Filipino delicacy. Um, uh, our next announcement is 5.4. We have one proclamation today, um, Italian Heritage Month. Uh, and uh, we're going to have Michelina Morelli on behalf of the St. Anne's Italian Seniors Club accept it, uh, and Council Fertini and Pelleschi will join me. I'll read this. Uh, Italian Canadians have contributed to the fabric of Canadian life by sharing their culture and faith and will continue their commitment to making Canada a rich and diverse cultural country for the benefit of all citizens. The city of Brampton is proud to recognize the important contributions Italian immigrants have made to Brampton's economic, political, social, and cultural landscape. During the month of June, the city of Brampton will celebrate the spirited culture and traditions of the Italian community, including raising the Italian flag at Brampton City Hall on Sunday, June 9th. Proclaiming the month of June as Italian Heritage Month is an opportunity to celebrate our vibrant Italian culture and history and celebrate the continued contributions of Italian Canadians to the city of Brampton. And I would note, at the last name of Brown, you probably don't think Italian, but my mother's maiden name is Tascona, and my grandfather is, uh, my late grandfather is Sicilian. Having said that, uh, my wife at home um, doesn't think I'm Italian. She says I can't pronounce any of the Italian words properly, so I'm looking forward to practicing on Sunday. Both her parents speak fluent Italian uh, and were born in Italy, so she considers herself 100% Italian and she calls me 25%. If it's bad enough uh, at home, now Councillor Fertini, who actually speaks fluent uh, Italian, uh, has also reminded me that I'm not a full Italian, uh, and 
and, and the same to Councillor Pelleschi, whose great-grandfather was from Italy. So we're looking forward to upgrading our Italian roots on Sunday, and we invite the entire community to join with us. And I'm going to ask Councillor Fertini and Councillor Pelleschi to join with me as we present this uh, proclamation from the city to you. And I understand Carmen might be joining us as well, too. Yeah. in your calendar for tomorrow, right? Like that. It's in my calendar? I'm alright. Uh, Micheline, you're welcome to say a few words on this proclamation. I'm new in this. Oh, it's on already. I said I have to press something, but I didn't. All right, uh, like you said, I'm Michelina. I belong to this club, the Santana Italian Senior Club in Brampton. This club is assisting for 29 years, but we are anywhere in the book. We only are now with the city of Brampton, and thank you to Pat that they put us in. And you guys help a lot, so I would like to thank you, Mr. Brown, our mayor, for all you do for us, Pat Fortini, all the other council. Thank you very much, and keep doing your job, and you're doing it very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, Councillor Fertini is on the... Uh, thank you, Michalina, for coming in. And I know this is the first time that uh, we did Italian flag raising. Yeah. Councillor Pelleschi and Fortini are Italian names. Remember that. They're not brown. So, <laughs> okay. We're Italian. Pelleschi and Fortini were purebred Italian yeah. last names. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I want to, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So uh, again, I want to thank Ingrid. We planned this for, we were going to do it last year, but it was election year. We finally got it done this year. And Patrick Brown, the mayor, and Pelleschi joined in. And, and thanks to Ingrid for all she's done. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Fortini did tell me he doesn't consider Sicily to be to Italy either. So <laughs> he's, he, he, he's, he's tough. He, OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Vasante. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm not Italian, but I am privileged to be married to uh, my wife, who is very much Italian. And uh, for so many years, I've had the privilege of living in an Italian family, Italian food. You know how great that is. And uh, I've had the uh, opportunity to learn a little bit of Italian, so I'll just try it here no, on behalf of all okay. of council. Uh, auguri, auguri a tutti gli italiani e grazie per il vostro contributo alla nostra città. Grazie. Okay, thank you, Councillor uh, Vicente. 
Our next item, an announcement regarding Euphoria Experience, a public downtown art installation. Uh, Tracy uh, Pep, uh, owner of Euphoria Experience, is here today for the announcement. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, um, members of council and Mayor Brown. I appreciate this opportunity. My name is Tracy Pepe. I own a, uh, the Scented Lair in downtown Brampton. I have been here a year, and so on Friday, we actually are celebrating one year of business growth, and I'm pleased to say that we've just hired another full-time employee. We are succeeding. So for those of you who don't know what I do, I scent hotels and condos. I am a perfumer. And for the last year, as I've been developing my brand, I have been teaching classes to public schools, to colleges, universities, and to the local communities on how to use scent within their home responsibly, healthy, and to address um, depression, anxiety, and all of the terrible things that some families deal with. So this is an alternative. However, my work is uh, creative. I have a very strong artistic background. And I normally do scent installations for cities like New York, and I did uh, recently um, Nuit Blanche in Toronto. And so the question was, where was I going to do my next installation? And of course, I chose my hometown of downtown Brampton. I live here, and I have been here for 30 years. So I created Euphoria, and Euphoria is a custom scent that really taps into a euphoric feeling. And the best way to teach people is to show people. So PAMA has um, graciously supported me. We are doing an art installation on September 19th. I'm here to bring awareness to city council. I'm here to ask for emotional support and uh, community support. This installation was um, how does scent make you feel? And then I went to various different local artists I have a painting created by Karen Darling on site. I went to Dolce Cakes and I went to uh, T by Daniel, what does Euphoria taste like? Then we went to Deb Kinney and um, another uh, vendor, Adriel, what does it feel like? And then we have Carmen who is graciously here, what does it sound like? All these elements are now going to be um, brought to light in a wonderful evening that is open to the residents. So to reduce costs, we have fabulous sponsors. And yesterday I had the privilege of being at Meridian as they've opened up a brand new bank. They are one of our big corporate sponsors and um, a great partner of my work. So I was really pleased to see when the mayor was talking about sponsorship and community of business, how we all jump in. How do we offset the cost for the community? We have now reached out to partners within our downtown core, and if uh, individuals walk into the stores, they get a voucher to get the tickets at $25. So we are doing everything we can to bring this concept, the art, the locals, the talents that sit right here within my community present. I have cards I'm hoping that people will pick up to learn. We have a wonderful website. I encourage you all to attend and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Santos. Thank you through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Tracy, thank you so much. Uh, I am a frequent shopper of your boutique yes. <laughs> and your our best friend Boo, the dog who is yes. always there. Um, thanks for all of your creative energy and really increasing the cool factor of the city of Brampton by having this Euphoria event. I'll definitely be there and certainly will encourage all of my council colleagues to be there as well. Thank you for everything that you're doing above and beyond um, your regular call of duty as a business owner. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, council Medeiros. Uh, just quickly, sorry, I know you just went up. Uh, yeah. Oh, I come back No, no. Um, so, first of all, uh, through the chair, um, you know, congratulations. I remember uh, Councilor Bowman and myself, and uh, we attended uh, the grand opening, and uh, um, it was a remarkable story about uh, not just going to do work in New York. People have to understand that uh, it's at top notch hotels, very world famous hotels. and. Uh, uh, someone passionate about Brampton, investing in Brampton. Um, just lastly, is uh, if you can share the website, I think uh, people oh, might. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible at self-promoting. <laughs> it's not my forte. <laughs> um, it's euphoriaexperience.ca. 
Um, you'll see the list of local businesses who are sponsoring. Um, you will see the partners where people can go get the voucher code. Everything is online. And um, thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. I will like to share just with council one of our businesses that we have secured. I have done the custom scent for Hyatt Place Canada for the next three years. And we are working with their brand new hotel that's opening in Mississauga, but they have shared with me expansions into Brampton. So there will be a new hotel coming here very soon. And I'm sure it will be released. <laughs> thank you very much. Again, thank you. Uh, Councillor Pelleschi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to say that, it, and it's just a comment, you don't have to come back down, um, but uh, it's it's so interesting, um, this type of business and, and the possibilities. It's, it's one, it's a, a, a success story that you've, that you've brought home to, uh, to Brampton, and, but the, the fact that, you know, sense that um, um, can change people's uh, um, attitude or, get them out of a state of depression just with either, you know, uh, smelling a pillow or walking by somebody and just having that uh, aroma that uh, just heightens that, um, makes you feel really good and, and it's, there's huge benefits. Um, and I have to, that's my pen. And I have to also say that I think the city of Brampton needs to trademark Carmen Spada because any time that he's involved with something, it's it's a success story. So I have to uh, I have to say I'm very interested in um, in the future of this, and uh, and I look forward to to a long uh, uh, friendship with the city of Brampton and you being uh, here in Brampton. So thank you so much. Okay. Um, thank you. Our okay. next item is the ad added item uh, from Councillor Dillon. Councillor Dillon, the floor is yours. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, members of the Sikh uh, faith across Brampton who are remembering and still grieving a tragic incident that occurred this week in June 1984 in Punjab, India, uh, when Sikhism's holiest shrine, the Harmandar Sahib, also known as the Golden Temple, was attacked and destroyed by the army of the time. <coughs> Heavy artillery, machine guns, and tanks tore apart the complex and the holy water surrounding the Gurdwara turned red uh, as thousands of innocent worshippers were killed in the operation. Many of our residents were there when this took place, uh, and many more of our residents lost innocent loved ones during this time and in the subsequent aftermath. As the healing process continues to this day, uh, hundreds of thousands of Sikh Bramptonians have gathered in the various Gurdwaras throughout the city this week to remember and to pay tribute to the lives lost and to continue to ask for justice. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Dillon. Uh, Councillor Sin. Yeah, and um, it is an important time in the community, um, you know, having a family that was affected by this uh, tra tragedy, I would say massacre. Um, it, it does affect a lot of Bramptonians. Um, I actually also, um, wanted to acknowledge, I guess I, I can't add anything, but I do want to acknowledge uh, June 6th is also the day that uh, uh, the invasion of Normandy. And I think uh, that's, you know, uh, it's ironic because uh, this affected my family, but the other one sets the foundations for our victory in World War II, which allows us to live in a free and prosperous country. So I think that, uh, you know, uh, we should also, uh, I wanted to give that shout out as well um, because it laid the foundation for victory in World War II. Uh, Councillor Dillon again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, uh, I'd like to add that uh, June 9th is the uh, uh, Sikh Nugget yeah, yeah. remembering uh, the 84 attack. And so um, it, it's an open invite to everybody from the uh, Peter Robertson and Dixie uh, Road area, uh, Gurdwara. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Councillor Singh, for acknowledging uh, D-Day, the largest uh, seaborne uh, invasion in military history. Uh, ensuring uh, the freedom we now uh, enjoy. And there was a commemoration of that this weekend with the local Brampton and Bramalee legions, and uh, that's certainly part of our collective history, and so very uh, appropriate uh, for that acknowledgement. Thank you, Councillor Singh. And, sorry, just that, I think everybody did get an invite to the parade as well on uh, Sunday. Uh, if they did not, I'll make sure the invites go out with that uh, comfort double mentioned. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor. Uh, seeing that, that finishes up announcements. Now we're on to government relations matters. The next item is with Lowell Ruben Vaughan, Office of the CEO. It's here to respond to any questions from Council. Do any members have questions regarding information provided? Uh, Councillor Santos has a question. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering because there was so much stuff that happened at FCM and um, ongoing updates regarding uh, the provincial government. If Lowell, you could provide just a very quick presentation and run through um, what you gave to us today, that would be fantastic. Uh, through the mayor, I'm absolutely uh, happy. I will try to keep my remarks brief. This is a relatively heavy um, GR update because as Councillor Santos said that there is a number of things that we are trying to track. Um, I did want to just start off by um, sharing a short update on the Big City Mayor's Caucus as well as the Federation of Canadian Municipalities um, annual conference that took place this uh, last uh, weekend. I'll try to keep my remarks brief and then open it up to uh, our delegates who did participate. Uh, from a staff perspective, I do want to um, acknowledge um, and extend our appreciation for our delegates who did participate, so including Mayor Brown, as well as Councillors Dillon, Medeiros, uh, Vicente, and Santos. So thank you very much for all your hard work and these conferences are pretty busy. <coughs> Uh, the conference started off with the meeting of the Big City Mayor's Caucus. Um, to sum it up, the focus really was on the upcoming federal election. There are some very specific federal asks, in particular about working with, for the federal government to work directly with uh, municipalities. Um, and this is really in regards to some of the relationships that we now kind of find ourselves with the provincial government. So it's not just municipalities that are having a difficult time working with the provinces, some provinces anyways, but it's also the uh, federal government as well. So there are some very specific asks as it relates to infrastructure, in particular around those that are related to climate change. So extending the program for the disaster mitigation um, and adaptation fund, as well as um, securing additional funding for uh, public transit, which we all know is uh, quite important for growing communities such as ourselves. During, F uh, during FCM and the Big City Mayor's Caucus, I just thought I would bring everybody's attention to polling that FCM did conduct um, in March. It was very specific on the municipal sector. They really wanted to gauge um, residents or uh, the communities, various communities' perception of all three levels of government. So they did formally release this um, at the conference. The full package was part of the, um, the GR update that I provided yesterday, so I just took some liberties to um, move around some slides in terms of what I thought um, were of importance for Council. Um, first, they looked at the overall um, performance of all three levels of government, and as you can tell, I think um, uh, across Canada, municipal government um, generally scores relatively very good or acceptable or excellent, uh, more so than the other two levels of government. And then if you look to the right, you really get the sense of um, what people's perception of who is the best level of government to do a number of things. So if you look at um, uh, working with uh, the community, uh, finding solutions, working with um, uh, the environment, climate change, et cetera, et cetera, the best level of government has been the municipal sector. So I think that's, that's quite encouraging, especially going into some of our federal asks as we talk about our federal election strategy. <clears throat> The rest of the slides, I'm not going to go into too much detail about these, but interestingly enough, the, the chart on the left, um, a, a number of the issues that we raised during uh, the conference and we're going to continue to raise at AMO and then during our federal election strategy really focuses on the issues that matter most to uh, this council, our community and our residents, uh, housing, in, um, investing in infrastructure, uh, climate change, water, wastewater, public transit. So these are all very important issues um, that's affecting uh, residents across, across Canada. And then the rest of the slides, and, and, I, and I won't go into great detail because it is part of the package, so just really in terms of other questions as it relates to uh, the federal, provincial, and uh, municipal relationships. Uh, for the specific FCM um, advocacy, we did have, um, and I think we were probably one of the few municipalities that actually had um, a fairly comprehensive and robust and creative um, leave behind. Um, I do want to acknowledge uh, my colleagues in STRATCOM who did work um, diligently to try to do something that's a little bit fresh, um, as well as colleagues across um, all the departments and divisions that provided some updated information on a lot of our key areas. Um, so I just pulled, you know, what they look like. We do have um, these posted online. I wish I would say that I had some extra hard copies, but our council uh, did a pretty good job of handing them all out, so I don't have any hard copies left. 
Um, and then the pictures on the right, you know, a lot of people ask what is the value of going to these municipal sector conferences. Um, I think there's a couple. One is obviously the networking amongst your peers, but it also provides um, a lot of platforms for municipalities such as Brampton uh, to be engaged um, during the policy plenary sessions where there's a number of very important issues being discussed, um, participating in a lot of the workshops on issues um, that are relevant to the city of Brampton as well. It gives us an opportunity to promote, once again, uh, the city of Brampton. And, and, and I do want to acknowledge just even, um, we ran into um, Mayor Nenshi, Mayor in Calgary, and the first thing that uh, Councillor Santos did was provide him with our, our brochure, and his first comment was, um, wow, this is Canada, looking at the um, makeup of our, of our council. So again, that's just really um, encouraging to see the diversity that we're being able to promote um, at a national level. I'm not going to get into the speeches of the party leaders, so I'd like to thank FCM for pulling together these short little snippets. I think for the most part, um, each political leader was on point. They knew who they were engaging with, which was mayors and councillors from across Canada. For the most part, they all um, expressed their interest to work directly with the municipal sector. Um, but again, I think what's going to be really important for us is to challenge them on that and ensure that we find ways to hold them to account to that statement. Um, municipalities um, across Canada, including us right here, are working on some significant and transformational projects. So it's really important for us to step up and ensure that we do hold not only the party leaders, but the parties, but also our local uh, candidates who want to represent us in Ottawa are well aware of our issues. And then lastly, I would be absolutely remiss if I did not um, acknowledge Councillor Dillon for being elected to um, FCM's Ontario Regional Caucus. I'll have a seat at the uh, board. Um, again, this is... You know, again, this is one of the benefits for as the city, as we continue to mature with our advocacy, government relations and outreach, taking advantage of um, everything that these associations have is quite important for us. So to have a very local representative at that table, it provides us with an opportunity to share information, um, both what is being discussed at that national level, but also sharing up um, to, in, to ensure that we provide Councillor Dillon with the local example so he can continue to advocate on our behalf um, with his colleagues. Um, from across, in this case Ontario, but also with um, the rest of uh, Canada. And then also as we look forward to FCM 29, uh, 2020, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for us to actually become more engaged and really promote even for us to become speakers at those conferences. I think that it's um, really, really valuable in use of not only councillors' time, but also for staff to um, engage with um, you know, peers and discuss and again just continue to promote all the wonderful things that we're doing right here in Brampton. If I come back down to now on to the province, um, I don't normally do this, but I thought that I would just bring back Bill 108 as an update to uh, what's transpired since last week, considering that this provincial government moves at the speed of light. Um, so it is now currently in um, third reading, so it did get through count, uh, committee within less than 24 hours. Um, just in terms of what is being debated now, um, what we know is that there has been very few amendments that were made to Bill 108, all the amendments that were actually made were those that were proposed by the, uh, the government. All the opposition amendments were, um, were not accepted. Um, the most significant changes were related to restoring collection of development charges for ambulance services. Um, also DCs related to nonprofit housing developments are to be paid over a 20 year uh, period instead of five year period as was initially proposed. Um, there, was an, there, were, there were no changes to what was proposed through the uh, Planning Act. Um, our expectation, I do have it as of yesterday, but um, for what it's worth, I guess now I can say that it'll probably be expected to be passed before the House rises, so tomorrow, likely today. Um, what we're hearing and what we're understanding is that the corresponding regulations, which is really what's going to be able for us to understand the full economic impact on us and the budgetary impacts, um, are expected to be released sometime in the fall um, what we are hearing, and hopefully this is encouraging, I do have a question mark at the end of this statement, but hopefully that uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing does do an extensive consultation um, and listen to all stakeholders, including <laughs> municipalities, during a consultation period to take place over, over the summer months. So given all the preparatory work that uh, staff has been able to do under short notice, um, we're very much eager and interested to participate in hopefully those consultations. Uh, to ensure that once again that we can continue to influence as much as we can um, uh, any future decisions as it relates to Bill 108. 
And I'll also once again just really acknowledge, we said this last week when we presented, but again, staff from planning, from finance, um, from heritage, uh, to legal and, and everybody in between and, and strategic communication for really coming together as a team um, really quickly and you know producing some of these just visuals that we did on um, on social media and as well as our website so I would be remiss if I did not once again acknowledge the hard work of um, the team that supports uh, the city's position we did participate in we did send our letter to uh, the standing um, committee um, as well as formal submissions through the ERO process um, there's a couple bills that we are that we're tracking. Interestingly enough, Bill 117, it was introduced on May 27th, and all indications are that it's going to be passed this week. For the most part, so I just provide a couple of points. Um, if there's any specific questions or comments to this Bill 117, I'm happy to take it back um, to Kathy Duncan. Unfortunately, she's not here today, but again, she is, as you can appreciate, very much um, involved in this process. And then also, um, Again, usually I don't bring forward private members' bills because the chances of them passing are very unlikely. Um, however, um, I think the one um, that was introduced by um, Andrea Horvath, the leader of the NDP, is important for us, uh, private members' bill 121, because this speaks trying to usurp some of the um, proposed changes to the regional government review and at least ensure that municipalities have time and that there is, you know, again, um, constructive and honest consultation with the public as it relates to any change in regional governance. So whether it's dissolution, amalgamation, or status quo, I think that there is some uh, merit if council wishes to again support um, uh, this effort because again it speaks to our advocacy and you know obviously our work that we've been doing with our colleagues at the uh, region, uh, region appeal, and our fellow um, municipal partners. And then lastly, just looking ahead to uh, where we're going um, next week, I'm, I'm going to be bringing forward a. 2019 email report that's proposed a series of, of delegation re requests as well as tactics that we can use to hopefully engage further into the AMO conference. Um, in July, I'm going to be bringing forward a 2019 election strategy. Originally, I was hoping to come uh, next week, but I think that um, I wanted to rethink a little bit and also find ways to, in particular, engage the youth during the, um, during the election period to kind of get out that call to vote. So I just wanted to take a little bit more time to ensure that we can capture a few more elements, which hopefully you'll find appreciative on that. Uh, we are continuing to monitor Bill 108 as well as the Regional Governance Review, and we'll continue to provide updates as we go along. Um, and then lastly, on next week's GRM, um, we're gonna provide a little bit more on some amendments to the National Housing um, Strategy Act, which, um, is proposing some amendments that would pr you know, really raise highlights or highlight the need for the right to housing. Um, we're going to provide a little bit more updates on a motion that was passed by our local MPP, Sandu, as it relates to getting the government moving on the GTA West Corridor, an issue that we seem to be talking about um, over and over again. And um, a couple weeks ago, Councillor um, Singh, you did ask about uh, provincial cuts to the $50 million, uh, the 50 million tree program. So I did catch this morning that the federal government is actually stepping up and has actually um, is providing funding, federal funding um, to revive that program. So as far as what I understand from now is that program will, um, will continue moving forward. So I just did want to bring that update as well. So, so with that, I apologize for the, the length of this, but happy to try to answer any questions. Okay, we have a few questions. Councillor Santos. Thank you through you, Chair, and thank you, Lowell, for the, um, the quick presentation. Um, FCM was a big success. I think we went uh, in there prepared with the brochure. We wanted to be aggressive. We wanted to wave the flag of Brampton, do some learning of best practices and also networking, and also take a seat at the table. So to uh, Councillor Dillon, my friend, um, also known as floor candidate number one, uh, congratulations. We hope that you represent us well at FCM. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Um, but we were very successful handing out the brochure, waving the Brampton flag. We got a lot of comments from it. And in fact, Councillor Vicente even gave the brochure to the security contingent to the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> right before he was leaving, so hopefully it got into his hands. Um, I also wanted to speak about uh, the town hall that we're planning to have on Bill 108 to educate the public on the impact of Bill 108. 
Given the fact that the local governments, based on the abacus poll conducted by FCM, show that the biggest, the, the, the most trust to deliver services to residents actually lies within local governments, and the tenuous relationship we have with the provincial government and the uncertainty on the different things that they're throwing at us. I am wondering um, if we could very publicly extend an invitation to MPs and MPPs um, to delegate to the town hall meeting we're planning to have, hopefully in July, regarding Bill 108 and the relationship um, that they want to strengthen with us in the city of Brampton, the second fastest growing municipality in the country. So I don't know if that requires a motion on the floor or if we could take that as direction uh, for the mayor to, as in a public way, extend an open invitation to the MPs and MPPs to attend that particular town hall in July. And like the cannabis town hall, we will publicly share who was in attendance and who was not to uh, engage on such important matters. I'm not sure if a motion is required. I ask the clerk if that's necessary. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm not sure a motion is required. There is a recommendation from committee last week, which are in the committee minutes for consideration today, and it does speak to the in-person town hall to be convened, and staff as part of that can submit an invitation to the Brampton MPs and MPPs. Okay, perfect. So I just wanted to highlight that, and then um, to, 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 other than that, uh, one of the biggest... Uh, discussion points at FCM was actually on climate change. There was like standing room only in the climate caucus meeting and it was constantly referred to throughout the various <coughs> plenaries as well as um, the leader speeches as well. So it was a great effort from our team Brampton at FCM this past weekend and uh, look forward to all of the organizing that will happen for AMO in August. Thanks Lowell for all your hard work. Okay, uh, Councillor Dillon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to thank our council members who attended the conference and uh, uh, as well as uh, your staff uh, uh, for lobbying uh, the Ontario caucus to vote for me. And I want to, I'm very honored and very humbled to be on the board of directors. Uh, um, I think it's very important going forward to have a representative from Brampton on the board. And I want to uh, thank you, Lowell, as well, for keeping us uh, prepared and organized while we were there. Uh, and hope we can uh, begin the process of preparation, uh, council. Uh, myself and you uh, as soon as possible and uh, it was a uh, it was a really uh, good trip learned a lot uh, had a lot of information uh, we learned uh, you know quite a bit about what the plans for the federal government are going um, it was also not a great trip because I think probably about 40 to 50 people came up to me uh, thinking I was Jagmeet Singh uh, even uh, while we were in the uh, election room uh, people were like hey Jagmeet how's it going and so uh, I think when we, when I got to the uh, podium and uh, spoke on some of the things we've done in Brampton, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think that put me over the top, and, and I was able to win. Uh, but uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for all, all of your support, and uh, look forward to, uh, uh, you know, bringing Brampton's issues and as well as the issues of other municipalities uh, to the table going forward. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dillon, Councillor Mullins. Yeah, thank you. Th uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in returns to the, uh, the OSPCA new regulations, um, I know that they're, because they were, uh, who's going to fund it if we have to staff it? Because I know there's difficulties with our staff now, because if there's a co complaint about animal mis misuse, we are limited because we have to bring in the SPCA, uh, but they get all the funding. So if they're going to download that to us, are they going to download the funding as well? the mayor um, that's the biggest question that um, we have staff have um, I would probably argue that while the responsibility may be downloaded to the municipal sector if that's the decision that um, the city and council wishes to go um, I would question whether or not funding would come with that okay and the second uh, second um, question or point under this new federal uh, tree program I read it briefly but I didn't read it in, in, with any detail is this going to help replace, because um, we have the million uh, aggressive, uh, a million trees, will this help replace the canopy of trees that were, say, uh, damaged from the ice storm in municipalities, or what is it more for replace the remote areas where there have been forest fires or declining forests in the, uh, the through forest, through uh, 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 Through the mayor, the, um, 
indirectly, it will help the brand, like the city's efforts. Um, but this particular program is geared um, uh, for private residents that meet like certain thresholds um, in terms of available land and, and trees lost. So indirectly, the city will benefit, um, but it's, it won't necessarily specifically help the city. But again, if planting the million trees, so indirectly, the okay. answer is yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm just delighted to hear, obviously, that the fund is back. It's, uh, you know, uh, most councillors here, you know, it's been my delight to recognize that everybody does care about climate change uh, substantially. And, uh, but these funds help us a lot because our budgets are so constrained. And I know we have a goal of having a million trees planted in 2040. And I believe previously, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was 33,000 trees that were planted through this fund already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, through the mayor, yeah. So 33,000 specific trees in the city within exactly. the city of Brampton. Yes. So it's it's great news. If we could get a, a link to show that it's back from the federal government, uh, I'd like to tweet it out and just you know credit where credits due. The the government stepped up, and I think we should acknowledge uh, their efforts. Thank you. Councillor Zemhe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Lowell, and also for all your support uh, for our team this weekend. Uh, I want to point out uh, that uh, FCM next year will be taking place in downtown Toronto, and that is an incredible opportunity for every member of council to be able to participate because uh, it will allow us, uh, in a very uh, uh, opportune way, give us the opportunity to showcase Brampton's priorities, whether it's for transit infrastructure, and also to uh, tell the story of some of the initiatives that we have undertaken in this council, whether it's on climate change or whether it's on transit or whether it's with our uh, initiatives for uh, post-secondary education and bringing university education here to our city. Um, I, I know that uh, staff will be uh, looking at how the city of Brampton may present itself at FCM uh, is staff going to be coming back to council perhaps in the fall to indicate how they might approach FCM Toronto 2020? Uh, uh, through the mayor, happy to uh, bring something back both for FCM and perhaps even for AMO 2020. Um, I know AMO's, you know, their planning starts at the second that the AMO conference ends, so perhaps we could just explore some opportunities internally um, and then bring something back in, in the fall in terms of how we want to leverage um, yeah, because I, 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 don't, we, I don't think we should miss this, and if uh, staff requires resources, people, time, uh, let us know. Uh, the, uh, the idea of the City of Brampton hosting its own hospitality suite or presentation center would be uh, something that we should definitely be looking at, and uh, I am certain that uh, Council will provide staff with any support they need. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think this is a great opportunity now that we've, we've brought forward Omar Jat Sandu's um, uh, motion that um, we've, we've discussed it here. So I'd like to, with the indulgence of Council, bring forward item 17.3 um, that is related to, uh, uh, to what the MPP for Brampton West um, had done yesterday. So I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, we just need a vote to bring that item forward. So the motion I um, I sent out, and I'm, I've sent a copy to uh, Mr. Fay, um, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Medeiros. Whereas in December 2006, the OMB approved an amendment to the Regional Official Plan ROPA 15 and the City of Brampton Official Plan OPA 245 to expand the Brampton Urban Boundary to include the Mount Pleasant Heritage Heights Secondary Plan areas, which are also referred to as the Northwest Brampton area. Whereas OPA 245 included a policy requiring that a north-south transportation corridor be planned, designed, and constructed in accordance with the recommendation of the environmental assessment study prior to the full development of Northwest Brampton area. Whereas in 2007, the Halton Peel Boundary Area Transportation Study, HP BATS, was initiated. This was a joint study undertaken by the Region of Peel, Region of Halton, City of Brampton, and the Town of Caledon, Town of Halton Hills to examine the transportation needs within the Halton Peel Boundary Area, whereas in March 2008, 
the then Ontario Min Minister of the Environment approved the terms of reference for the GTA West Corridor EA study and the EA was initiated in accordance with the Ontario Environmental Assessment Act, the EA Act. Whereas in December 2009, Brampton Council directed staff to initiate the secondary plan for the Heritage Heights area, which included the preparation of the Heritage Heights Transportation Master Plan. Whereas in 2010, phases one and two of the HP BATS EA study was completed and confirmed the need for a north-south transportation corridor to be constructed as a Halton Peel Freeway with connections to Highway 401 and the 407 in Halton region. The HP BATS area largely coincides with a portion of the preliminary route planning study area that was identified in the GTA West Corridor EA study. Whereas in 2015, the phases one and two of the HHTMP completed by Coal Engineering <coughs> identified and recommended a preferred route in the Heritage Heights secondary plan area, which is also one of the highway routes identified in GTA West Corridor EA study. Whereas the GTA West Corridor is a vital piece of transportation infrastructure that will help Brampton meet the projected growth in both employment and population identified in the Provincial Places to Grow plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe and would, will deliver multiple benefits including greater connectivity between urban growth centres and enhanced people and goods movement. Whereas on February 9, 2018, the Ministry of Transportation, MTO, announced that Ontario has accepted an expert advisory panel's recommendation that a proposed highway in the GTA West Corridor is not the best way to address changing transportation needs and further that the province would not be moving forward with the highway for the GTA West Corridor. Whereas the impacts of the MTO announcement exacerbated existing challenges to advance the planning for Heritage Heights, delayed job creation in the Northwest Brampton area and ignored ongoing concerns with traffic congestion, high car insurance rates, safety for the residents of Brampton and two-way all-day go service. Whereas MPP Armajat Sandhu of Brampton West recognizing the immediate need for an enhanced transportation network, reduced travel times and the urgency to alleviate congestion across the GTA has tabled a motion calling on the government to resume the environmental assessment for the GTA West Corridor. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Brampton staff share the findings of the OPA 245 Halton Peel Boundary Area Transportation Study and the Heritage Heights Transportation Master Plan with the Ontario Ministry of Transportation. Therefore, be it further resolved that the Mayor of Brampton send a letter to the Premier of Ontario expressing the City's support for MPP Armajat Sandhu's motion asking the government to resume and complete the environmental assessment for the GTA West Transportation Corridor. That a copy of this motion be forwarded to MPP Armajat Sandhu and the Minister of Transportation Jeff Urick councils and the councils of the Region Appeal, Town of Caledon and Halton Hills. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Fleshy and Councillor Maduros for putting this forward. I would note uh, Peter. Uh, one of the challenges we have in Brampton is uh, gridlock. The ability to get product to marketplace is critical. And every time we look at economic development, it's a component of our pitch, getting product to marketplace. This 413 has been a long-standing ask of the City of Brampton. It will alleviate congestion and make it easier um, for economic development. I know we've been critical of the current provincial government uh, on uh, some of the uh, legislation which we've had uh, a difference of opinion on. Uh, this, this initiative uh, by government MPP likely means the government supports it uh, and uh, we should certainly uh, give credit where credit's due. Uh, this would be a win uh, for the GTA West Corridor and for that reason I thank Councillor Medeiros and Pileshi for um, getting this on the agenda and expressing our our support, uh, Councillor Medeiros. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And uh, just to really echo your comments, uh, I do want to recognize Councillor Pileshi's leadership in this and bring this forward. Uh, I thank him. I think it's long overdue. Uh, the city, uh, especially when we talk about the employment numbers that uh, we can get out of, uh, um, you know, completing the AA and, and starting development to that area. Uh, so thank you very much for this, and I hope my members of council uh, will see how important it is to support this. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dillon. Um, through you to uh, uh, Councillor Pileshi, um, support it, um, but just maybe if you're open to um, the final um, uh, the final paragraph there, 
um, where it says MPP Amarjot Sundu, the Minister of Transportation, Jeff Yurk, Councils of the Region Appeal. Um, does that not include already um, the town of Cowden? Are we just not repeating it twice? I'm assuming when we say the councils of the region of Europe, it includes uh, Mississauga and Caledon. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe the intent was to send this to correspondence to the region of Peel Council, the town of Caledon Council, and the town of Halton Hills Council. So, so it's the councils of. Oh, okay. It's councils of the region of Peel. Can we, um, I, I think, and if you're open to it, uh, instead of just the Halton Hills, because I think uh, it affects uh, the region of, of Halton as well, can we send it to the, um, whether we send it to the, uh, the Halton region or the other individual municipalities within the Halton uh, councils of uh, Halton as well? Can we add that in? Just for the information. Councilor Plesch, can you answer that? Thank you, and um, no, and I understand your concern. It's it's, but it's the region of, of Halton that's really um, um, done the majority of work on their side of this, and um, it's they kind of go hand in hand. It's going out that way, anyways. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if uh, the reason I ask is I've had some conversations with um, some councilors within. Uh, the Halton region um, and so for their information it's up to you so for each municipality yep. um, that's representing uh, the region of Halton too yep. it's just to let them know what we're doing I, I don't have an issue with it yep. great. so if it's something right. that yeah. you wanted to add sure great um, last speaker councillor Sin yeah I just have a, qu a question a clarification for Lowell actually so um, did did Ford uh, did, uh, was the premier not announced that this was starting again? Because uh, out there, a lot of people think this has started. Uh, through the uh, through the mayor, so within the budget, um, the provincial government's budget, yeah. um, they did announce support for restarting the environmental assessment for the GTA West corridor. Um, but again, there hasn't been any. When is that going to start? What is that EA process going to look like? So we're still. While it sounds like the government is supportive of it, yeah, they haven't actually started. When is the actual guideline? So, MP MPP um, Sandu's motion starts to hopefully start that conversation sooner than later. Okay, okay, uh, that's unfortunate. I thought they had started it, but I do support this motion, and uh, thank you for bringing this forward. I think it's very important. If I may, just through the mayor, um, uh, if, if the councillor will indulge me, just in addition to MPP Sandu, would you be open if you also include our other MPPs, just to ensure that they have you know the, the same motion in particular, the other um, PC member of uh, Parliament? Yep. Friendly amendment. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Thank you, uh, Lowell. A motion to receive um, Lowell's. Um, uh, that the brief report from the Office of Chief Administrative Officer to the Council meeting of June 5th, 2019 be received, moved by Councillor Santos and Councillor Fortini. All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay. That's for you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I apologize. At the approval of the agenda, Councillor Fortini added an item and requested that it be yes. considered after announcements. I uh, missed that, so I apologize. So we should go back to that item. Okay. To Councillor Fortini's item. Will we do it now? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, so we have our safety uh, committee already organizing. I'm getting some calls saying, when are we going to start this uh, uh, committee going? And I know we just uh, selected them. You know, in the summertime, the violence always is more higher. And uh, I think the emails went out and was canceled. So they're doing, I think the, the next one is on the 26th, as far as I know. But um, we uh, also mentioned that we were going to have our Brampton Watch part of the, the committee. So I wanted to know, like, uh, we have to select someone from there, but I want to leave it to them. Make sure they select someone and they just add it to the group and try to get this meeting going because summertime violence is more higher. And, you know, it's already June. 
so maybe we could try to get it as fast as we can. And uh, they also sent some emails hoping that we, they could get maybe two meetings a month. And I said, that's up to the committee after. Uh, usually it's once a month, and then maybe we could stretch it in the winter. So. Okay. So um, just to make sure that uh, we send it out uh, uh, so they can select someone. Is there a seconder for that motion? Sure. Uh, yeah. Councillor Santos? Um, Councillor Bowman. Thank you very much through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just inquiring, did we not put someone from, as, a, as an alternate? Yes, uh, yes, I think there was one, but she was an alternate, but we didn't know who they were gonna select from the committee. So we're leaving it up to the Brampton Watch, and if it's sir, that they put it on, but it's a okay. meeting going. So I just, I just, I don't, I don't have an issue with it, Councillor Fortini, as you know, I don't uh, have any issue at all with that. I just want to make sure that we're not setting a precedent here for any other future group that no. comes forward that right. wants to sort of operate a, a different neighborhood watch or a different safety or a different community initiative. Uh, are we going to be adding people from those groups as well? As far as I know, and I think when we talked, it was only the Brampton Watch working with us, only one group, and that's it. And they select who they want, and I think. You know, we put her as an alternate, they select someone, that's fine. If they don't, she's the alternate. We leave it up to them to who select. Okay, so, so my, my question, my question just basically is if another group comes forward, are we also going to add a person from that group? So, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, council has, on occasion, when they establish these advisory committees, um, uh, amend the terms of reference to allow other community organizations to have representation. So that would be a decision that would be up to council at the appropriate time should those groups come forward. Okay. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just going back, and I understand that uh, the person's already as an alternate, but uh, it's up to them if they want to put her, or then they just move her out to all, or they got someone else. We'll leave that decision to them, but we need someone from that group. And most likely it's going to be her anyway. But, so let's maybe try to get this this meeting going as fast as we can. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Motion uh, carries. Okay, that should take us to uh, delegations. Our next item is delegation 7.1. Shaley Prajapati, a student, is here to delegate regarding discussion item 17.2 at the request of Councillor Santos regarding climate change which we can discuss after the delegation. Welcome, Shaylee. Whether it may be on newspaper headlines, social media, or on television, we've all heard of it. Climate change. But the question is, if we've heard about it so much, why isn't anything being done about it? As global temperatures increase, ocean levels rise, the polar bears starve, natural disasters become more destructive, and the ozone layer depletes, we continue to sit idle and watch. The spotlight. The truth is, the rise of global temperatures is only a result of our own actions and activities. Every day, we continue to add on to the already excessive amount of greenhouse gases and, that are present in, in the atmosphere, which causes global warming and ultimately impacts us negatively in return. Global warming has been linked with increases in natural disasters such as hurricanes, heavy precipitation, and melting of glaciers, which can lead to both flooding as well as the destruction of marine ecosystems. This is a problem that does, that does not just end right then and there. Instead, it impacts numerous other factors that continue to deteriorate our Earth, which is why climate change is one of the biggest issues we face today, not only as a city, but as a planet. In fact, Canada itself contributes greatly to this issue. Canada accounts for about 2% of all annual greenhouse gas emissions worldwide, which may seem like a very small amount, but 2% of a number as large as 38.2 billion tons can be quite alarming, especially taking into consideration that 
that Canada's population only accounts for about 0.5% of the global population. This is why we need to acknowledge our everyday actions and make a change, because at the rate that we're pumping out these greenhouse gases and exploiting natural resources, it would take about five Earths to support ourselves. Five Earths. Yet the sad truth is we've only got one, which is why we must do everything in our power to save it. Although, as a part of the Brampton Grow Green and 2040 Vision initiatives, we are taking a step towards a more sustainable future for our city. Yet, it's time we take the next step, declaring a climate change emergency. This would include encouraging the use of cleaner sources of energy, as well as electricity powered and net zero vehicles, which are transportation methods that emit little to no greenhouse gases. The climate change emergency would also involve designing more buildings that are certified by green standards, such as net zero, which, are, which was mentioned before, as well as LEED, which stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. These are only a few of many ideas that could be implemented in order to ensure that our city is doing as much as we possibly can in order to nurture and take care of the environment. As not only the residents of Brampton, but also as global citizens of our Mother Earth, it is vital that we acknowledge the importance of addressing climate change and take initiative to mitigate these problems. If we don't take action now, future generations are bound to suffer the consequences. In fact, in 2060, I'll be 57 years old. I'll have children, and, and I do not want to have to face their questions, asking about why we didn't act while we still had the time to. They'll ask me why we didn't do anything to save the Earth from its own destruction. Why we stood here, being ignorant, and continued to watch the world as it died. Why we stole their future, knowing that we had the time and power to combat climate change. Let's change this narrative and take action while we still can. Because the idea is not that we could or even we should take action, but rather it's come to a point where we must. If we want to preserve our Earth for future generations, it's imperative that we take action now. It's time we start acknowledging the issue rather than pushing it away. It's time we make changes to our lifestyles for the betterment of our planet. And finally, it's time that we stop thinking that a seemingly small city on our huge planet cannot make a change. As Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shaley. Excellent. Um, Councillor Santos. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for coming in today. It makes us all very proud when we have young leaders like you passionately delegating to council and having the courage to do so on behalf of so many young people in the city. Um, I have this painting in my office uh, done by an Indigenous artist, and there's, a, there's an inscription on it that says, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Um, and I got that like many, many years ago in my 20s, many years ago. Um, and our young people in Brampton are always talking about climate change. According to the Abacus poll, it's one of the top issues of concern is the environment. So thank you for speaking on their behalf. Um, we were just recently at a conference um, with all various municipalities around the country, and that topic of climate change just kept coming up because we feel it very much so locally, especially here in Brampton as well. Um, the, now, I wanted to share with you that I do have a motion uh, coming forward. This motion was prepared all week with the feedback from all departments, from staff, different community organizations, with Sheridan, who are here to present today, as well as the CBC and the TRCA who support it. Um, and it is calling for exactly what you've asked for, which is a declaration of a climate emergency. And so while the clerk puts it up, I just want to very quickly summarize that it does four different things. Number one, it declares, it makes a commitment that the city of Brampton um, declares a climate emergency in the city and will take action. Number two, it acknowledges a lot of the things that we're doing already as a city. You know, Brampton's reputation of being the suburban sprawling community is a bad one. But when you take a look at the list of the different things that our city has taken action on already, it's 
you, I'm, I, as an environmentalist myself, I'm super proud of what we've been able to do, even without declaring a climate crisis at the moment. Um, it also talks about targeting greenhouse gas emissions and um, working with other levels of government to achieve those targets and uh, mentions funding as well. And I believe Councillor Singh has a friendly amendment to make. So if anyone has, can find Councillor Singh to get back in here, that would be awesome. Well, actually, um, Councillor Santos, uh, before that amendment, and before we debate the motion, I would note we have an added um, delegation from David Lang. We could do that before we debate the motion. Sounds good. I'm down with that. But thank you for presenting on behalf of all the young people of the city of Brampton. And please stay as we uh, vote on the motion in a few minutes. So before we debate the motion, are there any other questions for Shaley? Councilor Medeiros? No. Okay. On that note, uh, David, uh, the floor is yours. And Shaley, thank you for your eloquent presentation. <clears throat> Tough act to follow, David. No, I know it is. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, mem members of council, members of staff, and members of the public. And Shayla, thanks, thanks for your presentation as well. Um, I'm going to give you the seniors' perspective on the climate um, climate crisis that I think we're in. I also want to thank um, Councillor Singh for um, mentioning about D-Day, um, because my the theme of my presentation today is about the about D-Day, and um, with tomorrow being the 75th anniversary of D-Day, um, that was when the Allied forces landed on the beaches of Normandy, and my father landed on Juno, Juno Beach three days after D-Day, and for the next 14 months, he fought on the ground in France, Belgium, and Holland, uh, and in Germany as well. He endured many horrors, including a time specifically that he mentioned at the Falle Gap, where the bodies of fallen soldiers were so numerous and so closely packed that it was impossible to find a clear path. He, however, survived the war to return to Canada and continue building his family, and thank God for that, because otherwise I wouldn't be standing in front of you today. And I asked Council to pause and think about how different today's world would be had the Allied for, uh, countries not worked cooperatively to create um, that historical D-Day offensive, a turning point in the Second World War that ultimately led to the defeat of right-wing fascist threat to the world order. And with the recently released IPCC report, the International Panel for Climate Change, it should be obvious that climate change represents a threat more insidious potentially far more disruptive than any threat that humankind has faced before, including the Second World War. And it's disappointing to me that our leaders are so distracted at the moment with their own domestic issues and international squabbling that they seem incapable of mounting a coordinated and aggressive campaign to protect civilization as we know it. Their inaction is in part fueled by a naive electorate that somehow believes we will be right again if only we can go back to the way things were before. And as historical U.S. Navy officer Oliver Hazard Perry once said, we have met the enemy and the enemy is us. Yet all is not lost. While world leaders dither, many cities around the world are taking bold and innovative action. And cities have the power to change the course of our climate future. Collectively, cities co consume over two-thirds of the world's energy and create 75% of the world's carbon emissions. Now, here in Brampton, 80% um, of carbon emissions come from two sectors, transportation and residential energy consumption. Both of these sectors can be dramatically affected by municipal-based um, development and land use management policies as well as build building standards, so it's within our own control. What our cities do individually and in unison to address climate change can, can set the agenda for communities and governments everywhere. That's words that were stated by C40 Cities, which is a network of megacities committed to climate change action. During World War II, every Canadian citizen was effective. Some, like my father, were placed in the direct line of fire, and he was one of the lucky ones. Others paid the ultimate price. But whether it was food stamps, rationing, changing jobs to work, work in munitions factories, or volunteering with the Home Guard, the lives of every Canadian were affected in some way that contributed positively to the war effort. Brampton citizens must understand that preserving our world for future generations will take a little sacrifice. 
The good news is that fighting climate change does not require them to land on beaches or face enemy fire. <coughs> Yet we must help them understand that failure to change and failure to sacrifice even by a small amount will surely result not only in direct weather-related damages from climate change, but also from the indirect socioeconomic disruptions that will contribute to human suffering and loss of life on a scale never before experienced in the history of mankind. So, while well, the city has done lots, and I appreciate what, what it has done, declaring a climate emergency is a symbolic but an extremely important step in the recognition that we cannot fight climate change under a business as usual scenario. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, uh, David. And now we will go uh, back to the motion from Councillor Santos and Councillor, we look to Councillor Singh for his amendment. Do we need a consent to bring it forward? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, generally it's accepted, and I think you mentioned at the beginning that yeah. we consider it after hearing the delegations, so oh, it's before good. us. Okay. I got a question from Councillor Santos. It was, okay. So I have Councillor Santos, and then uh, because Councillor Santos had mentioned before that uh, Councillor Singh had an amendment to your motion. Yeah. Okay. So you continue speaking to your motion, and then we'll get the amendment, and then we can have a fulsome discussion on that, on the full motion. Thank you. Through you, Chair. So as um, uh, David had mentioned, um, declaring a climate emergency is taking a very, is a bold statement for the city of Brampton, one that I think our residents and especially our young people and older people <laughs> um, uh, support and will be joining other municipalities as well. And so there is a, like a lot, there's a, a, an essay full of whereas is because um, all the various staff from different departments um, as well as Peel Public Health um, people like David Lang and other stakeholders have contributed to this motion. Um, and so I don't really want to read all the whereases just to save time. All of council received it yesterday and certainly for the public's um, perspective, you could find that as well posted online. So I'm just going to read the where the therefore be it resolved and I believe Councillor Singh has a friendly amendment. Therefore be it resolved, the City of Brampton officially declare a climate emergency for the purpose of aiming, framing, and de deepening the City of Brampton's commitment to the protection of our ecosystems and our community from climate change. And number two, staff coordinate with relevant departments and other levels of government, including but not limited to Environment and Climate Change Canada, Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks, TRCA, CBC, Region of Peel, and its Office of Climate Change and Peel Public Health, all plans related to climate change adaption and mitigation, including the Environmental Master Plan, Transportation Master Plan, CEERP, Vision 2040, Flood Protection Resiliency Plans, Stormwater Management Plans, Peel Public Health Goals and Air Quality Modeling, Planning, etc., and report back on recommendations for the City of Brampton to achieve a climate change target of 80% greenhouse gas reductions by 2015, and number three, staff report back on federal, provincial, regional, and other funding sources and or partnership opportunities that support Brampton's initiatives to mitigate and adopt, adapt to the impacts of climate change. That is the, the uh, motion, and thank you for letting me tabling it. Okay, I'm gonna jump ahead to Councillor Singh so we can know what the actual motion is. Councillor Singh, your amendment? Yeah, I just wanted a friendly amendment on uh, single-use plastic as well to look at that so part of the staff report back because I know some municipalities are moving towards that so just a report let's say that we'll repeat that so single more. use plastic banning single use plastic just a report back a report that. back yeah because a lot of municipalities yeah. are moving towards that okay yeah I don't think the motion was to yeah. The report. Okay. Garbage. Friendly amendment? Councillor Santos? Yes. Okay. Moving to our list, Councillor Bowman. Thank you very much through you, Mr. Mayor. David, thank you for coming. Uh, to the young lady up there, thank you. Thank you for coming as well and delegating. Um, I, I just, in reading number two, and um, I'm, all, I'm fully supportive of the green initiatives as well. I'm just wondering if we can add in number two the report that comes back. Um, that we should have some idea from staff um, of the costs 
that we're going to be encountering for future budgets only because number three asks us to look at um, support mechanisms to cover off those costs. So if that can be a friendly amendment uh, so that in uh, item number three we understand what sort of costs and additional costs we could be looking at covering off from various levels. the costs that are presented are not just the financial fiscal costs, but also any future implications to public health and damage, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Sorry, if, if I could just add one more thing as well. Um, and it's just, it's just because of the wording, um, climate emergency is, is our BMO going to have to be involved in this at some point, shape or form now as well? since they're the ones who look after all emergency measures in the city? Uh, through the mayor, I spoke with Alain today, and we would uh, advise the province, the Emergency Operations Centre, that it is indeed a climate emergency, and they are familiar with the other municipalities that have done so. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wallens. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm anxious to hear what... Uh, Sheridan College has to say today because I know that we've been working very uh, closely with Sheridan College on this. Um, I'm okay with the motion. Um, I think it uh, speaks speaks uh, what we should be doing for sure. Um, just have to keep in mind, and now we do have support of the Regional Appeal. Uh, Christine too has been in contact with us and Andrew Farr. They're very impressed with what we're doing so far with our Community Energy and Emissions Reduction Plan. And they're looking at us to uh, form a model on what we're doing here in the city of Brampton throughout the region. So that's good news. It's actually good news. You talk about in the whereas is about your renewable energy sources, uh, biogas from the Clarkson Waste Treatment Plant. We have a company right here in Brampton that's uh, looking at um, demo waste, technology from waste. It's looking at hydro cells, hydrogen, production of hydrogen. We have another company very close to the border. Uh, I think it's in Mississauga, Britannia Road in McLaughlin, I believe it's uh, the name escapes me, but they're actually doing hydrogen cells now. They're using vehicles. So I'm glad you have that mentioned in there, the alternative energy. Um, we do have to keep in mind that the wind energy is pretty much redundant for this area, although we can look at all the other, for sure, the solar and everything else. Um, interesting, though, uh, Germany is probably one of the four leaders. And it's kind of ironic that we're talking about <laughs> D-Day tomorrow, but uh, Germany was one of their leaders, actually, uh, in renewable energies. 40% of their capacity on the national grid now comes from renewable energies, but you have to keep in mind that out of that, 40% of these are owned by private citizens. So we're going to have to get the community involved here. Um, we're going to have to get other levels of government, absolutely. Uh, and we're actually going to get the business community involved as well. It's not going to be, it's great to put this on paper, um, but we're going to have to take significant ac action on this. There's going to be a significant investment needed not only from our budget, but from all three levels of government as well as the private sector, as I said before. So we've pretty well planted the seeds. Now we've got to uh, bring in the harvest. So thank you for bringing it forward. I, I, it's great, and I'm okay with these <coughs> amendments as well, especially the single-use plastics. So it's great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Uh, this is wonderful, and I think, you know, climate change and declaring it um, a, an emergency is an excellent step that we are taking, and it's a bold step, so I really think it's excellent. Um, I'm just wondering about, um, we know the importance of, of our young people being involved in the conversation around climate change, but not just the conversation, but learning how to actually, um, you know, take steps to impact in a positive way our, our community and our environment. So I'm just wondering if there was any way we can add conversation with the school boards in, in Brampton uh, or for, Pe for Peel, uh, because we know if we are able to teach our kids from young, they'll grow the, um, and have the practices fully ingrained and if there's a communication strategy with the school system as well. So I'm just wondering if, if that could be captured in there. Um, in conversation and encouraging conversation with the school boards as well. Yeah. Friendly amendment, Councillor Santos? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, Councillor uh, Dillon. Yeah, is it possible through you, Mr. Mayor, um, to have included in the, in the report how um, local businesses and the economy would be impacted 
um, by any amendments um, on potential changes to our policy regarding uh, single-use plastics? Um, can we have um, the potential uh, impacts included in that report? I, I think they would automatically be included in the report, but um, fair, to, just to specify that. Um, sure, sure. Councillor Santos. Okay, uh, Councillor uh, Willens. Yeah, sorry, just uh, one quick comment. I know that uh, on item two, um, talking about bringing back the report, I believe in the Community Energy Introduction Plan, we're having a report coming back in early part of 2020, I believe, aren't we? Um, is that satisfied? Is that okay? Because the CERT's going to be bringing back a report on how we're going to get to this 80% greenhouse gas reduction by 2050. So that report will be coming, and that's going to be in the in the CERT report, I believe, through, through our task force. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay. Um, Councillor Pelushi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can I ask staff uh, just to comment on kind of what this report is? Uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, the motion. I think Councillor Sento said that you, she worked diligently with staff on this. Um, can can staff provide any comments on to on to acknowledge who? And uh, oh, Michael, come on down. Um, <coughs> Just kind of what, you know, what this report look, uh, is going to look like when it comes back. And I'm, I'm kind of interested in uh, the education component of, uh, of what, we're, what we're going to be doing. Thank you, Chair. Are you talking about the uh, community energy plan? The report as, a, as it's before us. Um, so, um, so working with Sheridan and with Councillor Williams' uh, leadership, we are developing this community uh, Community Energy and Emissions Reduction Plan, and that will lead to a series of targets that we have to meet, or we should be meeting, to reach that 80% reduction of GSG by 2050. And that will have a, a long list of actions that we have to do, like partnerships with business, reaching out to the community to um, retrofit existing homes, or retrofit existing buildings. It's a pretty comprehensive, detailed plan mm -hmm. that will provide a roadmap to get to 80% reduction by 2050. And just, do you, Michael, do you have any comment towards, and we've talked about this at the region of Peel uh, by way of, uh, you know, our waste management and, and the fact that, you know, we don't feel the schools currently are, are uh, doing much in terms of um, educating the students um, and by starting the, uh, the litterless lunches, um, you know, telling parents that they have to deal with with the litter and, and pushing it back on them, but not providing the education for students. Um, so we have talked about it at the region uh, in the past, but have, have we had any communication with school boards and in, in trying to get them to change their mindset of, of you know, one litterless lunches and, and um, more opportunities like, uh, I think it's David Suzuki who does the, um, the green, uh, uh, the green growing in the in the back of their school there and, and and stuff like that. Have we had those communications? The chair, um, we do have a lot of work with the, the school boards. We have uh, one staff member who goes out to a lot of the schools and does a, a environmental sort of course with uh, different classes throughout uh, Brampton. I think she reaches about 20, 25 schools. Um, the school boards are also on our community energy and emissions reduction plan task force, so they're looking at energy. Uh, retrofits their buildings. They have a pretty comprehensive corporate energy management program that they're starting to implement in Peel. I think almost 90% of the schools within the region of Peel, uh, the Catholic and the public school board, are considered equal schools. So they do have a lot of programs that are going on and we're working with them. Um, from a tree planting and a naturalization program, we are having less of success, but we are doing a pilot project that I presented last week in Fletcher's Creek where we're doing rain gardens. So it's slow, but surely I think the school boards are starting to recognize that they need to um, engage the city and how we can move forward with environmental programs. And is that one of the things, the engagement strategy, uh, coming back in this report, will be a, a robust engagement strategy that we can try and start pushing out and bring the partnerships together? Yeah, future, yeah, for sure. Uh, 
it's not just energy, it's all, all the environmental programs that we're doing that we're trying to address and, and reach out to the school boards, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Um, thank you, Michael. And I just have to say, you know, uh, this council just supported um, uh, requests in the province to, uh, um, to undertake the EA of, of the GTA West Corridor. And in that motion, um, I provided a lot of information uh, regarding the need for uh, the transportation corridor. But, and I've had this conversation with Mr. Lang, and I was actually looking at old emails um, just last night um, that uh, David had sent to me. I don't think we're, we're, we're saying that, we're not saying that, you know, paradise needs to be paved over and we need to make way for, for um, a greater number of cars. What we're saying is complete the EA. Um, and so that we can look at what is needed to ensure that, um, you know, one, we get less cars off the road, we move um, we can more, more cars off the road. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Councilor Bowman. Um, and, you know, we're moving goods, but uh, uh, goods also being people as well. So um, I think it's important just to recognize that, you know, today we've, yes, asked for the province to... Uh, uh, to, to finalize and complete the EA, but we're also saying that uh, today here with this motion that I'm proud to support and call a recorded vote that uh, um, we identify climate change much like uh, a lot of other people and uh, municipalities and we recognize that and support the emergency. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Willens and Dillon for a uh, second time. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Willens? This is just quickly, yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you, Michael. I believe that you're on holidays this week, are you not? And you came back for today for this report. I'd like to acknowledge the fact that David Lang, that presented, does sit on our SERP task force. Thank you, David, for sitting there. And Rosemary Keenan is here from our BIAC committee. Thank you for coming, Rosemary, and, for, and with the Sierra Club as well. She's been a big uh, advocate for the environment for many, many years. Uh, Michael. Um, it's important to note that uh, with the SERP task force, we have got a lot of uh, big players in Brampton. I've always uh, been kind of regressed that we sold Brampton Hydro to Hydro One because there's an energy provider that is, they're easier to work with when they were Hydro One. We've made some uh, good strides with Electra, getting that get data that we needed for uh, the energy consumption in the various parts of the city. Uh, Enbridge Gas has come to the table and provided with high energy uses and Area. So it's through the work of staff and, and this committee that we've been able to get the data we need to complete this uh, community energy plan that I'm really looking forward to, uh, to having been presented in council and, and having uh, hopefully we get the unanimous you know, support of, of the council because there's going to be some big asks. And uh, I hope this council is, uh, is true to uh, this motion that Councillor Santos brought forward about declaring a climate emergency because it's going to be a big ask and we have to stick to our guns if we want it to make it work. So thank you again, Michael, for coming off and uh, coming off your holidays and no <laughs> hurry home. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Dillon. Uh, yeah, sorry, just a uh, final question. Um, I know this is uh, uh, symbolic, uh, but um, in terms of... Um, our strategies going forward for FDI or uh, any type of economic development, uh, does this in any way um, impact anybody's, uh, any potential for anybody to invest in Brampton if we declare a climate emergency? Question? Is that a uh, you, Chair? Um, <clears throat> we've positioned the actually the Community Energy and Emissions Reduction Plan as an economic development plan. We see a huge um, opportunity for the City of Brampton to take a leadership in uh, energy planning. And there's a lot of global players that are looking for <clears throat> a break to get into the North American market. So we, it is an economic strategy that we're sort of seeing this, uh, as well as an environmental strategy. So this will tie in? Yes, very much. All right. Uh, could we have a, a recorded vote, Mr. Mayor, standing? A recorded vote standing? Recorded vote, Mr. Councillor for, for Dini? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm supportive of this. You know, I just, I came from Italy, and I couldn't believe how the climate change they really focused on over there, like no metal roofs, you know, now because of the heat. 
uh, on the, uh, everything to recycle. It tells you on every label you're not allowed to have nothing in the store or, pr or produce there, even the imports, unless it's telling you what type of uh, what garbage it goes into. And from 14 years till now, we are way advanced when I was there last time. And, you know, I threw a container in the wrong container. My mom, 86 years old, all flipping. No, no, it has to go on that one. It says right here. And meanwhile, so we have to educate the more, more of the people. And I, you know, and we have to worry about our future. And then I'm glad we brought this up. So I'm very supportive. Thank you. Hey, Councilor Vicente. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think... Uh, Councillor Dillon's question about whether or not this is symbolic uh, or not um, is an important one because governments of all stripes for the longest time talk about climate change, talk about reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and um, they do some of the work, but the work is usually slow, uncertain, it's affected by changes in government, etc. And so I think that we can add a little bit more beef to um, the reports if we have... Um, and I would ask for a friendly amendment so that um, the report covers this. What are Brampton's greenhouse gas emissions today? We know that uh, Ontario, as one of the uh, engines of the country, is responsible for about a third of Canada's total greenhouse gas emissions. And in that third, um, it's interesting to note that um, we actually, as a province, peaked a couple of years back in terms of what our greenhouse gas emissions were. And our greenhouse gas emissions today are lower than what they were approximately 10 years ago. Um, but that being said, what is Brampton's share of that total amount of greenhouse gas emissions? And I think that the report should capture that because that is how then we can measure over the span of 30 years because we set a target here for 2050 we can measure how we're doing, not just in, in 30 years, but how are we doing year after year? So by the end of this term, by the end of the next term, et cetera. And so uh, I would like to ask for that uh, as, a, as an amendment so that the report captures that and that if we can get an estimate of what our emissions are today so that we can then measure our progress as we go down. Um, so that makes it not just a symbolic measure, but it makes it something that we are really targeting. When I think of the word targeting, I think of, uh, I think of uh, you know, uh, throwing darts to a wall. We know we're facing the wall where the dartboard is. We're aiming for the bullseye, and that's what 80% represents. Um, I also think that the uh, third part of the motion needs a little bit of uh, wordsmithing, uh, but I think I see uh, the clerk has added a couple of... Uh, separations to the different ideas so that I think that that is now better. And uh, those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Councillor Willens for a fourth time. Third time on this Council subject. Mission. Thank you through you, uh, uh, Mayor. Um, yeah, thank you, Councillor Vicente, for bringing that up. Um, the SERP report is actually covers where we are now and where we're going to be on a, I don't know if it's, but Herb can probably talk more about that. Um, now I lost thanks to the mayor what I was going to say. But uh, no, I guess it does speak to that. But I'm, is, are, is the delegate, are you speaking, Herb, when you come up? Okay. I'll let I'm Herb not. then, because he will clear up a lot of the questions that have been asked. His would be, yeah, why not? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I just want to clarify, Council's dealing at the moment with uh, Delegation 7.1 related to climate change, item 17.2. There is delegations from Sheridan College, which is the next one, 7.2, and that's in regards to item 11.2, Committee of Council Recommendation CW238 on the, uh, the SERP. Which, which, which actually speaks to this, speaks to this motion, so I guess. Yeah, sure, I forgot what I was gonna say, so I'll just leave it. Thanks, my, Mr. Mayor. We would have two separate motions, why don't we ratify this motion that appears to be broad support for and then we will deal with the shared emotion next and I'll just wrap things up by saying I think there was a broad consensus across this table that we take climate change uh, seriously uh, and I know from watching the activities of council members many of you have already been actively involved in green initiatives and you know Brampton's on the forefront of some ex exciting partnerships you look at the Nordic partnership that, that uh, 
um, that Brampton is involved in. You look at some of the work that Sheridan College is doing. Um, I think there's some exciting opportunities for us to be uh, a great example. When I was in provincial politics, uh, we had a big debate on carbon pricing, and frankly, it was one of uh, my uh, uh, greatest frustrations within the uh, political party that I was active in at the time, uh, and I challenged the question. I said, how can we say we believe that climate change is a threat and not offer a response? How can you believe in climate change and not offer action? Uh, and within the federal and provincial debate, it was a debate over carbon pricing. Now, I realize one of the delegations said this is all within our control. I want to be very clear. We don't intend to let the provincial or federal governments off the hook on their broader responsibility to future generations. And that, that, that's what this is about. You know, all of us want to make sure that future generations of Canadians and Bramptonians can enjoy the same beautiful land that we inherited. And many of you have stories of, uh, of, of the past, of things that you've loved about Brampton, and you want to make sure that uh, your kids will be able, and grandkids will be able to enjoy the beautiful natural surroundings we have in this country. And the data says that we have a real challenge, uh, a real challenge when it comes to protecting our, our environment. And we have to do our part. Um, we can't wait for leadership at the provincial and federal levels. And actually, it's not as rosy as, as we paint. You actually talk about um, a reduction over 10 years. I saw that, that on the news this week, they talked about reductions last year, and Ontario's numbers actually went up last year. So as much as we're all talking about taking climate change seriously, um, unfortunately, there's too much hot air on this topic and not enough uh, action. And there is, you know, the, the typical counter to doing something is, oh, we're only a small part uh, of the broader picture. Uh, that, you know, people that, climate dinosaurs who wanted to stick their head in the sand would always say, oh, well, what is China doing? Well, that's irrelevant to, are we going to be on the right side of history? Are we going to do the right thing? And Brampton should be on the right side of history when it comes to climate change. And for that reason, I thank Councillor Santos for putting this forward. Um, I don't mind making an economic development pitch that says we welcome business, we welcome investment, and we're a green city. I think those aspirations can work uh, collaboratively, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see um, a unanimous vote on this important uh, motion today. So we, um, Councilor Singh wanted to call the question? Okay, one more point from Councilor Singh. I do apologize, but many councillors are uh, uh, passionate about this. I'm passionate about this. There's some things I've been thinking about that came out through actually Councillor Fortini's comments about Italy. And um, I, would, I was gonna request it, but I think it'd be better part of this motion given that we're declaring a climate emergency, that at our next uh, planning meeting, we talk about uh, sustainability measures for buildings. Uh, is that allowed? Instead of asking for a report back, uh, because um, I was, it's something I want to talk about, uh, and I think it'd be, since we're already talking about climate change and sustainability, that just as a discussion item that we have that. And it'll include sustainability measures? Okay. Okay, then I am good. Okay. I see Councillor Willens hasn't had a chance to speak, so Doug? <laughs> Well, you made me forget what I was going to say the last time. Uh, part of the goals in the, uh, for the uh, Community Energy Plan uh, are economic goals and investment in green jobs. And I'm glad that uh, Mayor Brown brought up the um, Nordic City Solutions folks because uh, the Nordic City Solutions, they're the countries that are in the EU, and FDI does speak about at the EU agreement, uh, and they're the leaders of climate change. So there's lots of economic... Uh, opportunities with those countries. So that should, uh, I think, help answer some of Councillor Dillon's goals. Thanks. Okay. Seeing no more questions, all those, in, oh, that's just going to be a recorder vote, so the clerk will take the recorder vote. All in favour of the motion as amended, please stand to be counted. Showing in favour is Councillor Dillon, Councillor Singh, Councillor Fortini, Councillor Williams, Councillor Medeiros, Mayor Brown, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Pileschi, Councillor Willens, Councillor Visante, and Councillor Santos, were you standing? Yes, and Councillor Santos. Mr. Mayor, that motion carries unanimously yeah. 11 to 0. Yeah. I don't. I was pretty sure Councillor Santos was voting for that.
Um, okay, uh, Michelle McCallum, Associate Vice President of Capital Development and Facilities Management, and Herb Singok, Director of Sustainability, are here to delegate regarding 11.2, and specifically Committee Recommendations CW238-2019 from the May 29th Committee of Council meeting regarding the Budget Amendment and Recommendation Report, Community Energy and Emission Reduction Plan, Ontario Transfer Payment Agreement. Welcome, Michelle and Herb. Thank you very much, Mayor Brown and members of Council. It's an absolute pleasure to be back here in Brampton in the Council Chamber uh, this morning and see so many friends and familiar faces. Uh, just before we start our presentation, I would uh, request Council's indulgence. We may go slightly beyond uh, five minutes uh, today, if, uh, if that's okay. Yeah, so moved. So moved by Council Flushing. Okay, thank you very much. Wonderful to hear the robust discussions and debate and to, to see the great delegations that have happened um, already this morning on this really important subject of climate change. And um, I'm Michelle McCollum, this is Herb Sinek, and we are really passionate about um, sustainability at, at Sheridan. And we're here to share uh, this morning, um, give you some general updates, thought I'd take the opportunity of being here to give you some updates on what's been happening at Sheridan. Um, and then Herb, um, who is really our thought leader on sustainability, is going to take us through the, pro the progress. And um, you know, to Mayor Brown's words, I think not hot air, but actually action um, that Sheridan has been making. And then talk about how we can work together going forward. So we're here. Um, um, on behalf or, or, or um, on the basis of the Community Energy and Emissions Reduction Plan report that was uh, approved last week at Committee of Council, but also to lend support to the important motion um, that you've uh, just approved and thank you very much for your leadership. Um, so we just have engaged in a process to develop a new strategic plan and I'm pleased to let you know that you're actually going to be hearing from our president, Dr. Janet Morrison, will be coming to council uh, sometime in the fall to share information about that strategic plan. And we're really super excited about it. And it really, um, one of the themes that really came out through that process is that the Sheridan community is so passionate about climate change and sustainability. So you're going to really see that clearly through our strategic plan over the next five years and how we uh, would like to work with the community to, uh, to further develop that agenda. Um, and, and our team were developing a new campus master plan. So we've hired a really great consultant, Urban Strategies. And over the next year, they are going to lead us through a process where we're going to redefine the Sheridan campus. You know, I, we hear lots of comments that you drive by the campus, you can't really see what's happening. It's kind of set back. There's a sea of parking in the front. And we want to change that. We want to redefine um, how we engage with the community through our built form and our built environment. And again, sustainability is going to be a very strong theme underpinning that whole master plan process. And we have a new mechanical engineering degree program, again, which has a very strong uh, emphasis on sustainability. So that's uh, adding to our current um, degree portfolio. We currently have around 20, we have 24 uh, four-year baccalaureate degree programs. And we're really looking to strengthen um, our engineering offerings. And so this September will be the first time we're offering this program and we're already waitlisted. So super excited to see um, where that goes. <coughs> And I'm um, also really excited to let you know that um, Sheridan will be um, offering programs, our continuing and professional studies team. Uh, we've partnered with Brampton Library, and Rebecca's sorry she couldn't be here uh, today, but she's hugely supportive. Um, and so we're going to start offering uh, career advancement courses in the downtown, um, initially f uh, focusing on partnering with the library and offering those programs in, th in their space. So that's going to start this summer. Uh, so super excited that that's happening. And of course, I wanted to acknowledge um, the importance of the Brampton 2040 vision and how we are and can continue to work together. Um, you know, something that I think was really important in the vision is that Brampton City Council can't do this alone. And you need the help and support of your community partners and you need the help and support of your broader community. And we at Sheridan want to help and support you to deliver that, that vision. 
Um, so things that were uh, underway just now um, through our campus master plan, we'll be thinking about the vision. Uh, we're engaged in conversations with RioCan and the work they're doing around Shoppers World. Uh, we're also engaging with you on Nordic uh, City Solutions and we're going to be hosting one of those events later this year. It looks like probably September. Um, and we actually want to build that into our campus master plan um, process as well. Um, so I'll hand over now, um, Herb's got a lot of uh, probably answers to some of the questions you were asking earlier, but um, I have the privilege of working with Herb every single day, but he really is uh, in the forefront and a, th and a real thought leader in the post-secondary world and beyond and sustainability. So we're so lucky to have him at Sheridan and he's really engaging passionately with, with city staff and the city team as well. So I'll hand over to Herb. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Um, to start, I really want to commend this community for uh, articulating a bold and progressive vision for what this, what this city is and what it's going to choose to be in the future. And likewise, I really want to commend the council for passing this resolution, which is really, really crucial to bring attention to the existential crisis of our time. Uh, and I'll just take a pause to address the councillor's question earlier about greenhouse gas emissions in the city. We've tabulated them to three and a half million tons. That makes 5.6 metric tons of CO2 per person. And if you want to see that in a global benchmark, the city of Copenhagen acknowledged as a, a leading city is currently at about three. So uh, Brampton places with most Ontario municipalities about double. Best practice globally. So. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to further say about the Vision 2040 plan is my team has the opportunity to interact with municipalities throughout North America and often around the world. And in our opinion, this vision is one of the best of such documents we've seen. So again, uh, our congratulations on this. However, as each of you knows, as our municipal staff would acknowledge, <clears throat> bringing this vision to life and bringing this resolution we've passed to life um, means we're mobilizing leadership policies, programs, um, direction from stakeholders all across our community. And in doing so, as we get that together, we collectively create some really radical transformations. These are really substantial uh, changes to, uh, to the business of usual within our city, and they, they actually have the effect of empowering everybody. And that's the kind of excitement that brings Sheridan to the table. Uh, transformations in our DNA. For years and years, we've been working really, really hard to keep our needle pegged all the way to the right-hand side of this, uh, this image you see here. Really, really pushing the idea of transformational plans and, and uh, informing policy rather than being driven by it. And uh, you'll see exactly that kind of attitude in the newly reframed, reframed re-articulated strategic plan and also in the campus master plan that Michelle referenced a few minutes ago. And when that kind of um, focus on transformation is paired with the city's objectives as expressed, and we put those together, we have the opportunity to really put the wheels in motion to make these big moves happen. I want you to consider the sustainability file. Our partnership in the Community Energy and Emissions Reduction Plan is actually right now bringing together major stakeholders from the public sector, private sector, institutions, industry, community, including our school boards. And this group is actively unpacking all the data and information we have about energy systems and carbon sources across our city and working to crystallize all these big moving pieces that we're going to have to put together in order to get to or invent our low carbon and clean energy future. So I'll quickly share a couple of snapshots of what those conversations look like, just so you can perhaps see why I'm so excited about this. This graph shows us that our community is currently spending collectively $1.8 billion on transportation fuels, heating fuels, electricity. And roughly, roughly speaking, 80% of that is dollars that flow to actors outside our city boundary. Left unchecked, that spend by 2050 grows to somewhere between $7.5 billion to $15 billion, along with that share of 
80% uh, leaving our city boundary. So we have the choice. We can view this either as a threat if we do nothing or as a tremendous opportunity for our own, our own economic growth. And this diagram of cash flowing uh, on the left-hand side from raw fuels to right-hand side where fuel is actually being used helps us actually see what that opportunity is. These gray bars you see top and bottom are actually wasted energy. So this is, this is effectively the inefficiency in our energy systems. It's energy that we collectively pay for, but we never receive. We never gets to do practical use to us. And that means then our practical task is to reduce the absolute amount of energy we consume for everything from transportation to buildings, and second, to reinvent and localize these energy systems so we can eliminate the waste and we can keep the energy and dollars into our community. And in doing those, we make significant progress towards meeting those objectives we've just stated in the resolution, but also our responsibility for future generations. And, um, and I'm gonna pause again from what I was gonna say because we, we, we spent a bit of time in the discussion on that resolution about what that 80% target means. We've shown through simulation that this is a possibility for this city. It means a very, very different vision of what this city looks like in the future. It's consistent with the 2040 vision, but at the same time, it is much deeper. And it means that collectively, we have to come to a community conversation about our will to pursue that and what we're gonna do with that. So it's a conversation for another time, but it's worth noting that it's one thing to say it, and it's a far different thing to make that happen. So carrying on from here, we realize also the potential to not only repatriate energy dollars that are currently leaving our city boundary, but also to drive local job creation at the same time. And lastly, I'd be completely remiss if I didn't point out that one of the outcomes we see out of the kinds of mobilization and conversation we're having is this idea that we could bring and leverage the social and financial capital of our community into our sustainability objectives and this is exactly what Larry Beasley was writing into the Vision 2040 when he framed the idea of the Institute for Sustainable Brampton. So we're really, really looking forward to coming back and carrying on that conversation with you. Really thank you for the time you've granted to us today. Let's go change the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Willens. Thank you, Herb and Michelle, for coming in. Uh, through you, sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you, Sharon, has been a in the community a long, long time. Actually, Councillor Bowman went there. That's how long they've been here. <laughs> but they've been a big part of the Brampton community. And it wasn't uh, for a number of years, you seemed to be forgotten. Um, it wasn't until, I believe it was 2015, if I'm not mistaken, you came for a budget ask to get this community energy uh, plant going. Uh, here we are a number of years later, and uh, what you've actually given to, uh, or get um, donated, or has given back is threefold of what we as a council back then voted on. So it's great to have you in our community. Um, Herb, you're one of the smartest guys I know when it comes to talking about this stuff. Uh, I think you're even smarter than Peter Garforth. <laughs> we'll but we do have, uh, it's, it's great to have you in our community. Um, and this is definitely something that council is supported here with this motion by Councillor Santos, but this is something that we've really got to work together, as you said, with the community to make this. Uh, make this uh, actually a um, reality. So thanks again for coming in and uh, we've got some big plans for the surrounding community around you. So yes, good, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Bowman. Thank you very much through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Michelle, it's always a pleasure to see you back here. Um, Herb, thanks very much. And it's funny the way you talk about, you know, how far this has come. Councillor Willens mentioned I went to Sheridan. Well, I remember back in 80, the early 80s, uh, you guys were the first ones that had the, the Entercom building, mm -hmm. what was called the Entercom building. And it was, uh, back then, it was, you know, the future of, of what was going to be. And now you compare, you know, uh, the, the Davis Energy building to the Entercom building that was, that was there, mm -hmm. close to the same place, actually. Yeah. What a difference. And, uh, you know, so from when we had a tour, I guess, three or four, almost three years ago, I guess to now, to what's uh, transpired in three years is phenomenal. So I can only imagine what is gonna transpire in the next 10 years. So 
I'm looking forward to this, and you're right, it's going to be it's going to be a great trip. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a motion from Councillor Willen, seconded by Councillor Santos, to receive the delegation. Uh, all those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Council will deal with the approval of recommendation CW238-2019 during consideration of item 11.2 at committee minutes in a few moments. Um, 9.1 is on consent. That takes us to 11. We're now at item 11, committee reports or minutes. We have four committee reports in the form of minutes or recommendation on today's agenda. Under Council's meeting procedures, the committee or section chair introduces their committee report or minutes that summarizes the matters considered and now brought forward to Council today for ratification. Our first item is 11.1 .1 minutes of the May 15th Committee of Council meeting. The committee recommendations only for this meeting were approved by Council on May 22nd. The full set of minutes are before Council today for a seat. I have a motion from uh, Councillor Fertini. Seconded by Councillor uh, Willens. Actually, I'm sorry. Um, this is for, um, here it is. Uh, this one is by Councillor Dillon and Councillor Pileshi. All those in favor? Motion carries. Summary of recommendations 11.2. Committee of Council met on May 1st. The committee recommendations were distributed with the council agenda last week and the full set of minutes were provided to council this morning for approval. I will now pass the chair to the respective section chairs in order of the consideration during the committee meeting to lead council in the consideration of the committee recommendations. Councillor Singh chaired the economic development and culture section. Uh, Councillor Singh chaired the corporate services section. Councillor Singh chaired the public works and engineering section and Councillor Santos chaired the community services section. Council will then consider a motion to approve the recommendations in its entirety. After all section chairs have concluded their summaries and any resulting council questions or debate has finished. Okay, so um, Councilor Singh. Yeah, uh, member of the council, you have the uh, summary of recommendations for you in front of you. For economic development, culture section, corporate services section, and public works and engineering section. Do any members have any questions? Seeing none, uh, Mayor Brown, I pass the chair back on to you. Okay. So I have a motion from Councillor Singh, second by Councillor Santos. You didn't know? Sure. Oh, do you want to give a summary of your section, Councillor Santos? Okay. All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, so which brings us to, do we have to adopt 11.2 separately? Okay, so, so that's included. So I don't need this motion then. Okay, okay moving on to 11.3. The Governance and Council Operations Committee met on June 3rd. The committee recommendations are only here for council approval. The minutes will be presented to the June 19th City Council meeting for receipt. I'll now pass the chair to Councilor Fertini to lead council in the consideration of the committee recommendations. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Member of Council, you have the minutes. So nice to see some names there. Uh, Councilor Bowman. Thank you very much through you, uh, Chair Fortini. I just had a real quick question. I was listening to the meeting um, while it was going on on Monday, and there was some uh, discussion around the office protocol in relation to um, how things get transferred from councillor to councillor and, and who gets what. Um, I'd also like to ask that question about the council office protocol in regards to um, the, uh, I, I guess, requests coming in from wards that are being taken by other wards um, and then, and then, subsequently, you know, a month later, coming back to the to the uh, councillor who in the other ward, then there's some issues they've got to they've got to solve. So, what what is the protocol on issues within the wards themselves? Who are to look after those issues? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'll, perhaps I'll start. Is uh, if a um, a matter comes into the ward councillor within the ward for which they represent, 
presumably they would be the ones that would be dealing with it. Now, whether it's a city issue or regional issue, then it can be distributed between both of those councillors. Um, but if it's within the ward pairing for the area for which a member represents, um, it should be their prerogative to deal with the issue. Okay. And that, that's in our protocol? Uh, that isn't in the protocol because that's uh, a basic expectation of, of elected office representation. If a councillor chooses to uh, involve another councillor who may have expertise in a certain area or whatever, that is up to that councillor's um, own prerogative. Okay. So, so the... It's the, it's the area councillors that do take care of the issues that arise out of, out of their own wards. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. You're still on the board? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, me. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify, Peter. I, I agree with uh, uh, Councillor Bowman. So, if something comes to me, and it's not my area, it's Councillor Bowman's area, I should not be dealing with it. I should send to the resident or something, it should go directly to that councillor the pair councillor of the ward. That's, I think, that's what he's trying to, to me. Because where sometimes it might come something to me and I start dealing with it, even though it's not my ward, then all of a sudden a month later, the other council, ward councillors are dealing with it again and it's causing double work for the staff. So us as a council, we gotta set up for either the protocol, so if it's not my area, I shouldn't touch it, I shouldn't even go there. That's what he's, I think, am I correct, council Right. Yeah. yeah, and I agree with him. Okay, okay. Councillor um, Dillon. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just in regards to uh, um, the council staff parking, I'd like to move a motion that uh, uh, says that uh, it moves from two to uh, three um, parking uh, wands that are given to um, staff. And so I have three full-time staff. I think it'd be appropriate that uh, each one was given uh, the parking. So, Peter, uh, maybe I'll let the clerk clarify on the parking spots, what staff do after. So through you, Mr. Yeah. Committee Chair. Um, this matter was listed on the Governance Council Operations Committee meeting this past Monday. Unfortunately, Councillor Dillon, uh, it was at his request, but he couldn't attend that meeting. So the committee referred the matter to Committee of Council next week. So if the intent of Councillor Dillon is to not refer it next week, since these minutes are here, and actually introduce a motion today, um, that is something that council can entertain. The motion will require a seconder. Yeah. So, um, so again, it's just uh, we get two. Uh, our, our staff get two of those little parking wands. Just saying that we get three, uh, because I have three full time. I will be having three full time staff. So, it's, it's, it's so three, Mr. Chair, that motion, if introduced, um, will require a seconder also to be placed. So. Uh, uh, that means for all council? That would be my understanding. The current yeah. current practice is spot. each member of council is afforded two yeah. free parking um, passes and any other parking passes that are required for each for any councillor. Um, the requirement as exists for other city staff is that person would be required to pay 50% of the parking. And councillor Dillon then I presume with councillor Fortini as the seconder is moving that that there be a motion placed that uh, councillors be afforded three free parking passes. Yeah. So all in favor of the motion? Well, oh, I think there's some. Uh, I'll second. I second it. So councillor. Vicente uh, seconded. Vicente seconded. I second. I wonder if he wants a second. That's fine. Doesn't so, a uh, question on that. Um, what is the policy? Uh, right now, for example, I know in my office, I have more than two people that uh, are parking. Um, does it not get charged back to our budget? Uh, if, there's a, if, if you wanted to charge it, can you charge it to your budget? Like what is the, um, what is the policy? Through you, Mr. Mayor, perhaps I can start. I, I believe um, there isn't a formal policy in place. Um, what has evolved was in the, in prior to moving to the political model, um, a decision was made several years ago to provide free parking for the council office assistance. At that point, it, it numbered five and then eventually moved to ten. When council moved to the political model, um, there wasn't a, a resolution of council with respect to how parking was going to be allocated. There was already one space allocated for free to members, to each councillor. 
Um, unfortunately, I can't speak to how many were allocated to the mayor's office previously or now. I'm, I'm not aware of that information, um, but I can find that out. Um, so with council moving to a, a new model, which presumably most of the members of council were entertaining the possibility of having two um, staff work for them, um, the staff position was there would be two free parking sp spots in total provided, and anything after that would be paid at 50% by that additional employee. If, if, if I can add to that, uh, and in speaking with uh, our Commissioner of Public Works and Engineering, much like when we say free transit, I, I think we need to declare it's zero fare transit, and the same thing would apply to parking. There is no such thing as free parking at City Hall. Um, if someone has that wand, there is a cost allocated for that parking, and that comes out of your cost center. So it is part of a budget that gets approved and is paid for. So the city or the corporation is paying for that parking. So the employee under that model with, for example, two, two are being paid for by the corporation. Um, then some staff have different, uh, depending on, on their, uh, their role within the corporation, are afforded that type of, of luxury to up to 50% payment for parking. So we do have those varying uh, establishments. I, so just to, uh, to draw as a chair, uh, what's the cost of the 50% of the parking? I'll, I'll defer to our Commissioner of Public Works and Engineer. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I'm having to refer to notes here. So the current uh, municipal parking fee is $44 a month. Or 308 a year, so uh, so 50% would be $22 a month. The, the, if I may, for council's information as well. So the the other challenge is the actual location of parking. Um, currently at City Hall, there there are uh, 368 total spaces. Of that, only 103 remain available for the public to use because of. Uh, permits and staff and others that are in those spaces. So it, it reduces the inventory of space available for public. So is that what now with both buildings or just this building here on the parking spots? The number I gave you was for, for City Hall. Um, the, uh, the West Tower has uh, 76 spaces available for the public. Okay. okay. Uh, Council will Lawrence. <clears throat> Quick, uh, just quickly through you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm okay if he wants to put that through his budget at 50%. Um, but these parking passes that the assistants get, that does not give them access into the council or senior staff area, correct? Because I don't want that taking spots of any of our fellow council members. But it's only access into, into the, the garage. The Rose Cedar has parking as well, right? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. That, that's correct. The, the uh, pass would not provide access to the to the uh, councillor area. Okay, thank you. So, just the last question. So, do we actually pay for our spot as a councillor uh, out of our budget? Is that what we're saying? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So, the councillor spaces are, are part of the corporate cost, okay. not directly okay. allocated so back to I'll second, council uh, office. the motion, like I said. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes. So the motion would be to strike out recommendation GC029-2019, which is the referral, and to replace it with the motion that uh, councillors be allocated up to, uh, to three um, spaces for their, um, uh, at no cost to their, for their staff. Councilor Mullins, again. Sorry, I thought we don't, other staff don't pay for the, the past spot, sorry. Oh, we do pay, all staff do pay. <coughs> Through you, Mr. Chair, 
as I understand the current parking assignment for the councillor staff, there are two spaces provided, paid for by the corporation, that are not charged to those two uh, councillor staff or to the councillors today. Councillor Dillon. Yeah, I'm good with if somebody wants to move that everybody pays. I'm good with that, but just for consistency, uh, I thought that if somebody had a third uh, full-time employee, that they could also have that uh, uh, parking. But either which way, if everybody pays, I'm good with that too. But uh, if a uh, council has a third one, um, I, I think just for consistency, we should uh, uh, allow up to three. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, Mr. Clerk, could you read the motion as it stands right now, please? There, there is no motion in writing, so I will, um, and, and there needs to be. Um, the motion is that uh, recommendation GC029-2019, which is the referral motion from the Governance Committee this past Monday, be um, deleted and replaced with a motion which essentially would read that... Um, the allocation of parking for the councillor's staff um, be provided at no cost to the individual uh, up for up to three spaces. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. And uh, following the discussion around the table, are we now entertaining for that to be paid for at the 50% rate, paid for by the councillor's office? Is that correct? Through you, Mr. Chair, that hasn't been proposed at this point. Um, so, following the conversation that I was listening to, uh, there seems to be a willingness for uh, members to have their staff have access to parking at that 50% rate, but for the cost of that to be covered out of the councillor's budget. Is that not the motion we're entertaining here? Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the clarification. Clarify. Go ahead. So to clarify, um, there's two, um, are they called transponders or are they called transponders available to uh, each office? Uh, and for consistency, if a, a, a counselor has a third full-time staff member. I'm saying that uh, also be uh, afforded to that third um, staff member as well. Again, if just for consistency, uh, because one, uh, a council office might have one, another council office might have three full-time staffers. And so uh, if we want to go to everybody pay, I can, we can do that, but uh, I'd rather us be consistent both ways. Yeah. Um, we deal with a lot of important issues here at City Hall. I know we're getting into a long debate on this. I just want to take counsel. Uh, Back to that, we just had a, a, a substantive conversation about uh, um, about climate change and what we can do. Um, let's not get down into the weeds on this. Uh, I'm happy with whatever the, the will of council is uh, uh, on this. Um, if, uh, if that's how city staff are treated, then council staff should be treated uh, the same way. And if there's a if there's, if city staff have that uh, benefit of a par parking spot, then council staff should too. So Mr. Chair, proposed motion is on the screen. Moved by Councillor Dillon, seconded by Councillor Fortini, if that's the intent. No. Should, I, should I clarify, Mr. Yeah, Clerk? Clarify, please. So uh, I think it's pretty simple that each office is given two transponders to, and if there's a third uh, for, so we're taking into account that there's two uh, staff members for a counselor. If there's a third staff member, what I'm saying is that should go to three. And again, if there is a, uh, if, if around this table that if uh, people want to reverse that, I'm also open to that as well, but I just want to be consistent both ways. And so, um, it's, it's three, uh, right now it's two, 
I'm saying go to three if that's the, the will of a councillor to go to a, a third staffer. Am I, am I, am I clear, uh, Councillor Vicente? Um, if I could ask Councillor Dillon, um, as a friendly, to include uh, the mayor's office uh, staff as well. So yeah, I'm open to that as well. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't want to put a position that I didn't Just, just be consistent. But whatever way you guys want to go, I've got no yeah. preference here. We're talking, so okay we're talking about $22, so I, I, I'm hopeful we can just get back to the agenda. Yeah. I was going to add that. Thank you. So, Councillor Bowman. Thank you very much. much. Through you, Mr. Chair, I'll just draw it out a little bit more. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Are we talking about three full-time staff members? Councillor Dillon, is that what we're talking about, or are we talking two full-time and one part-time staff member, full -time. three full-time. So if, if we want to be transparent in every way, shape and form, then any parking that the city councilor gets or that his assistance gets should be simply added to our, added to our budget numbers. And then you're paying for, we're, we're paying for everything, including our own part, including our own parking. It's transparent. It's on our budget going forward. and. You know, if you want three, if you want four, if you want five, if you want one for each car, it's on your budget. So, 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 yeah, uh, so Councillor Dillon's okay with that? So we all going to pay for it? Is that, is that what you said? It would go against our budget. That's right. Councillor Dillon. At 50%? Mm -hmm. Whatever the range. If, if that's the will of what everybody wants to do, I'm fine with that. I just want it to be consistent. Through you, Mr. Chair, then if the intent of the motion now is to so, um, you charge everyone 50%. I'll, I'm leaving my motion as is, and if it passes, it passes. If somebody wants to introduce another motion to, uh, if Councilor Bowman wants to put the other one up, then he's, he's, he's free to do that as well. Councilor Plushy. Th th thank you. Um, I'm wondering that there's been some discussion on this. Um, I think it would be quite helpful if we were to refer this back to staff and report back next week and get some clarity around the options based on the dialogue today in terms of whether it's three, whether it's uh, to Councillor Bowman's uh, perspective of that 50% funding and what it looks like and bring it back on the 19th for council to make a decision, if that would be fair and whether you'd be open to it. Okay, good. So we can defer this for the next meeting. Is that okay? Council yeah, room? Defer. Everyone okay? Committee yeah. Council. Committee council or council meeting? Next week at council. Committee. Oh, committee. 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 Okay, so I'll, that's great. Uh, council Pelleshi, you're on the board. I'll move the referral. Okay. Since you don't have a mover of the referral. Sure. All in favor? Good. Carry. Thank you, Councillor Fertini. We have a motion from Councillor Fertini, seconded by Councillor Dillon, to approve the committee recommendations. All those in favor? Motion carries. 11.4. Uh, the Planning Development Committee met on June 3rd. The committee recommendations are only are here for council approval. The minutes will be presented to the June 19th City Council meeting for receipt. I'll now pass the chair to Council Medeiros to lead council in the consideration of committee recommendations. Uh, thank you, Mayor Brown. Members of uh, council, you have before you the minutes of planning development. Are there any questions or comments? Councilor Dillon, are you on the board? No, no. Okay. Back to you, Mayor. No. So we have a motion from uh, Councillor uh, Medeiros, seconded by Councillor Pelleschi. All those in favor? Our next item is 17.1 referred matters list. The list is published quarterly on a meeting agenda and a copy is linked with each agenda to include a current listing of matters referred to city staff for further review and or report back to council or committee. Do any members have questions for the referred matters list? Seeing none. Uh, mo moved by Councillor Santos, seconded by Councillor Bowman. All those in favor? Motion carries. 17.2, this item was considered as per Delegation 7.1. 19, now we deal with item 19, public question. Oh, we have additional, yes.
Okay, so now we're on to uh, item 19, public question period. This is where we invite members of the public to come forward to the podium and ask any questions about any decision made by council at today's meeting. There is a 15 minute limit. Are there any questions for the public about a decision made by council at today's meeting? Yes, there are. Hi, my name is Sylvia and my question is related to both climate change and parking. Given that 47% of the city's emissions come from gasoline, why does, and you've just declared a climate emergency, why are we still talking about subsidizing parking when I think we would agree that there's actually fairly good transportation by public transit downtown? And does the city actually provide a subsidized rate for transit, given that you already provide a subsidized rate for parking to both council and staff? Councillor Santos will answer that. Thanks. Uh, through you, Chair Sylvia, thanks so much for your important question. Um, the matter regarding parking has been referred back to the committee. Um, I personally don't support more subsidizing of parking. So if the recommendation comes back that we subsidize for parking, more parking for staff, I won't be supporting it. Does the city have a subsidy for taking public transit, the city's transit system? Or is it just for parking? Uh, if you could repeat the question, sorry. Does so, the city subsidize uh, staff for transit? So the city, uh, to the extent that staff would ride a transit vehicle and pay a fare, uh, staff would be subsidized like every, every member of the general public. Um, as individual members, uh, there are city staff members that can purchase uh, a pass at, a, at a, a reduced price, and a few take advantage of that. Correct. Yeah, if we, if, if, if we want to remove car allowances too, I think we should have a discussion on that. So I think you know, we should make uh, uh, um, buses free to promote it. So if you're willing to do that, then that's a discussion for next week as well. Okay. Right? I'm Want to take a pay cut? Councilors to have this conversation on the government services. Uh, thank you for the, the question. Um, Councilor Santos, you're going to go first. The portion of the meeting dealing with the adoption of city bylaws to give effect to council decisions made at this meeting and previous meetings. I have a motion from uh, Councillor Santos. No, um, Councillor Bowman, seconded by Councillor Pileshi. All those in favor? Motion carries. That's for the bylaws. Bylaws 1119, 2019, all the way to 125, 2019, on page 18 of your agenda. Okay, to 127 because of the two additional bylaws. Yes. So amended? Okay. Our next item uh, of business is item 21, closed session business. I have a motion from Councillor Bowman, seconded by Councillor Pileshi, to move into closed session to deal with items uh, 21.1 to 21.8. Uh, do I need to list them out? Okay, all those in favor? Motion carries. Um, the meeting is now recessed in order for council to reconsider its closed session business committee boardroom CH6A. Uh, all meetings of council must start and end in public session. After closed session is completed, council reconvene in public session in the council chambers to complete its business on today's agenda. I'm gonna ask for council's guidance do you want to take a lunch break before the... Okay, so we're going to take a um, half hour lunch break before the closed session. So we will meet in closed session in the time now is 1.49, so at 2.20. Through you, Mr. Mayor, just a, one comment. Uh, the fourth floor boardroom, just to our uh, outside here, is now available. It's almost ready, so I suggest for the convenience of council we can meet there. Okay, we'll meet on the fourth floor in half an hour, 2.20. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back to uh, City Council. Thank you for uh, the four people that had decided to uh, wait and be here for the end of council. We appreciate your interest in local democracy. Um, in the continuing interest of transparency and open government, I will report in public session any outcomes from today's closed session business. As a result of our closed session today, I wish to report the following. 21.1 21, 21 minutes, these minutes were acknowledged by council. 21.2 minutes closed session from the regular meeting May 22nd, these minutes were acknowledged by council. 21.3 minutes closed session, committee of council May 29th, these minutes were acknowledged by council. 21.4, this is a litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. This item was considered in closed session and direction was given to staff. 21.5, litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. This item was considered in closed session and direction was given to staff. 21.6, litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. This item was considered in closed session and direction was given to staff. 21.7 was already done on con in the consent agenda and direction was given to staff. 21.8, these minutes were acknowledged by council, that's the Planning Development Committee. Uh, and 21.9, uh, this matter, direction was given to staff. Uh, confirming bylaw, our next item is item 22, confirming bylaw. I have a motion uh, from Councillor Pelesci, seconded by Councillor Bowman to approve the confirming bylaw to confirm the proceedings and decisions from this meeting. All those in favor? Motion carries. Adjournment. Next meeting is Wednesday, June 19th, uh, potentially July, July 10th and August 10th. Our last item of business is item 23, adjournment. Thank you members for your respectful consideration. We had a productive meeting of council today. I have a motion from Councillor Willens and Councillor Bowman um, for adjournment of the meeting. All those in favor? Motion carries. Go Raptors, go. Basketball.